Azure, did like again. easier. I did like again. I oh. forgot to unmute. Uh -huh. mute. Ah, we did the mute again. Thank you. Well, okay. Well, we're done. We're done. I'll see you. Uh... Oh. <laughs> That's we, great. We said this three times before we got started. Oh, we got to remember to unmute the mic. Unmute, unmute. Well, let's start again. Now, okay. you, let's see hey. in the comments. People can hear us, right? Oh, there. Voices coming through. There we go. Thank you, Philip. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, let's start again. Who, who, who are you? Hi there. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Jeff Fritz. <laughs> it is May 10th, 2018. I'm joined by Scott Kate. Thank you for having me. And... No, just kidding. Yeah. That's probably a mean thing to do with the Marvel no. voice thing. Oh, gosh. Uh, but it is early. It's 7 a.m. Uh, so my name is Scott Kate. Uh, just last week, I was on the other side in comments, and so I really am honored to be here. Cool. Like, well, thank it's you. One of the, it's a highlight. Um, <laughs> so I work on the Azure Cloud Developer Advocate team, yep. and my job is to uh, listen to customers and, and make Azure easier to use. And I've uh, I've only been at Microsoft a year. I'm a newbie, and I'm still learning my way around. My badge keeps working. Green <laughs> lights are coming on. So. It works. I can still work here. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty great to put your badge to the door, and you get a green light. You're like, I'm allowed. I'm still here. I still work here. Right. They'll send me a paycheck. So I had a, a weird idea, like, uh, maybe three months ago. I don't know the exact timing. And we started talking about... Sometimes when you come up with an idea, you don't know how the solution is going to play out. Mm. But that's really one of the best times of being a developer because you you don't know what you're doing. Okay. But you know what you want to do can be done, and then you just dive in and do it. You just you you, you make it up as you go along because you know there's something that's going to happen that's going to be cool at the end. Well, so we start. I we started with this idea of a Vision API. So inside okay. Azure, yeah, uh, they have this thing that you can give it a picture, mm -hmm. and then the computer will tell you what the, what's in the picture. What's on the picture? Okay. okay. And so I started playing with it. There's some demos. There's a lot of really good documentation. In fact, how I today we'll have to look at that because I I don't have all this stuff memorized by any stretch. And also, I'm not an expert, right? I just am a tinkerer, or sometimes I say I'm a consumer. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't really want to know what's what's how this is working. I just want it to work. I don't want right. to I don't want to build that my picture is blue or red or green. I don't want to like look at pixels. No. Oh my I gosh, say, no. Here's a picture, and then I just want a result. So 
had this idea, and then I thought, where can we get a bunch of pictures? You know, okay. uh, Google search, there's Flickr, there's stuff. And so what we landed on, and by the way, when I say we, I just mean me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we landed on Twitter, and I, I said, if you go to Twitter, if somebody else has posted something, or if you post a picture, and you at mention a Twitter account, okay, then... I will have something in Azure listening or polling or somehow triggering sure. that there's a picture. And then we'll get the picture and send it to uh, Vision API, Okay, which turns out to be easy. In fact, we're if I'm just honest, we're going to probably spend an hour, two hours, however long it takes us. Yeah. And all we're, we're doing is putting about four lines of code into your project. Ah, come on. You're selling it selling it short here a little bit. Come on. Sell I mean, the sizzle. <laughs> it's going to be great. So there's more cruft around. I mean, we will write more than four lines of code for sure because Absolutely. we have to do the integration. Mm -hmm. And we have to somehow figure out where this picture is going to come from. Somebody's going to upload it. I think we're going to use the stream mechanics you have. Sure. So, so to finish your story about the Twitter. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so your your account is hanging out there. It's it's looking for people posting pictures with a with a hashtag. Yeah. Or commenting on pictures. Okay. So you know you go through this stream of consciousness. You're like, okay, I'll let people post pictures, and and I got that working. And then I realized there are already hundreds of millions of pictures. So what if I just see something cool? And I want to at mention that. So on your screen, can you open Twitter? Um, uh, Twitter slash uh, Vision underscore API is right, the. So let's account. go over to our code here. I'm going to open a browser. Twitter.com slash Vision underscore API. Yeah, exactly. All right. And then zoom in so we can kind of. Oh no, that's that's pretty good. So the way that this works is uh, I've got some code that I wrote. Mm -hmm. It's all in GitHub, so we'll actually be using this as the sample. To, we'll, we'll be stealing from ourselves. And if you either at mention vision underscore API or you hashtag vision underscore API, which is kind of weird. I'm kind of mad at myself that I did that because it just adds confusion. I should have just done the at sign. But either way, you can you can do either one. Well, but... No, I think you know. I think you're pretty good there, Scott. Because if if I repl if I post a picture, I'm not going to be sending it necessarily to your your bot account, right? I might be sending it to yeah. some of my friends, and then if somebody later on, you know, who has who's mm -hmm. vision impaired wants to know what that picture is, they can do the reply with the with your hashtag, right, and be able to check it out. So I I did this this morning. And uh, uh, actually, it's it's pretty common. A lot of people have been using the service. But check this out. So this, so I got up this morning. Literally, yeah. it's five o'clock, and I see this come across my timeline, and I'm like, that's a that's a very attractive, professionally done picture of a guitar. And in my head, I think, I wonder if the computer is smart enough to know, like, is it going to come back with instrument? Is it going to come back as a freeway? Is it going to come back as something? So I just, I mean, this is clearly not me. This is how stuff works. And I reply with the hashtag Vision API. So you can see that. And then in about 10 or 20 seconds, uh, the result comes back. A confidence, 94.57%. And then it says a close-up of a guitar. And then I in include the tags. Now, there's a lot going on here. So I'll, I'll walk through how I built this. And, and the, the whole idea is to to kind of let the audience in on the secret sauce of how I built this, mm -hmm. which then leads to your and my conversation, because you said... Yeah, so I run into this interesting problem where we've got folks in the chat room that, that they want to share images, they want to you know say, hey, check out this picture of something that's related to whatever we're talking about right. here on the show, and I want, I want to have my moderator bot be able to filter and take a look at that image and tell me what it is perhaps before I let it get posted, mm. right? So so there's, as a moderator, I can actually, um, I can delete messages from the stream mm. or, right, I can also take moderation action and say, you know what, you've been posting some images there that are not appropriate. I'm going to give you a timeout. I'm going to ban you. You've yeah. done this too, 
too frequently. But the, the first piece before we decide what types of actions to make is, well, let's identify what folks are posting. Get some metadata back. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's how this all tied together, right? You yeah. Have, you have some images coming in through a chat stream. I have some images coming in through a Twitter stream. And then after that, we're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. Although you want to add some moderation so we can we can try to get there. Right. So so, so for for me, being able to see, you know, if if one of our friends in the chat room posted a picture of a guitar, for me to, as a moderator, to see it's a close-up of a guitar, fantastic. I would allow that to go through. Right. All right. So let's talk about some of the... the the nuances. So now that all this is working, like the good, the bad, how it's working, etc. At 30,000 feet, I have an Azure function okay. as a timer. Mm -hmm. Every X seconds does a Twitter search. And it just does a Twitter search from at the at mention and the hashtag mention of vision underscore API. Okay. And that's going to get back a, res a set of results. Oh, I also have configured how many results I want. So I think it's set at 20 because mm -hmm. it's every 20 seconds. If I set it at 100, I just have to go through the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So all of those results, I take the Twitter ID, I put it in Azure queue. Mm. That fires a second function, which is a queue listener. And its job is just to say, have I already inspected this tweet ID? Okay. So it does a little database check, and it says, oh, that's done, throws it away. Okay. So that's basically saying, what's new? And then, so I find the one or zero or two or however many items, and you can guess those go on a queue, mm -hmm. which then try, fires the third function, and the third function then parses, gets the, gets the uh, image, and then there's a little bit of smarts in that third function also that says if there's no image in the tweet, yeah. look at the parent tweet. And that's actually uh, a recursive function to the same idea. So it'll walk up the thread. That's right. Cool. So okay. that's, how that, that's how the replies work. Because when, when you hashtag a reply to someone else's photo, you're not posting a photo. So there's no, there's no photo in that tweet. Sure. But sure. the API comes back with a parent tweet. In fact... If you ha if you click that full API result, this is some JSON that I uh, I created, and Zoom in there just a little bit. I thought it would be fun to get people excited to actually show some of the metadata. Mm. So this is actually coming if you can peek at that URL, Vision API Azure websites. I'm doing this whole thing for free, by the way. Everything which, is which uh, URL? All uh, the way. Up. Oh, okay. yeah, in the URL, like maybe Windows Zoom into that. And uh, so this is this is all f running free. It's literally costing me zero pennies. Mm. Uh, this is on the free website. And at the end, once I find a result, I just store some JSON in uh, table storage. I say it's free. I think it might cost me one penny per month. So, Still, yeah, it's it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. <laughs> we, <laughs> it's certainly cheaper than living. How's that? Okay, <laughs> uh, we we've, we've certainly spent that. Um, talking. Anyway, so the point is not to, you know, rebuild a Twitter bot, but we are essentially doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, You're inspecting tweets, looking for your co your reference, and, right. then, and then go through your queues so that you have one at a time. You're bouncing off the Vision API and exactly. outputting information. Now, you'll notice in the comments, the very first thing I do, oh, sorry to touch your screen, is I have a get started URL, which is a tiny URL, mm -hmm. and then I also have the source code repo. So copy that repo, or maybe it's a link, you can click it. Let's open that and look at the repo. I should go into a new tab that let's is zoomed see. normally. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's dive into source. I have the source organized into uh, a couple of very easy to use functions. But what we want to do is go into helper CS, the third file. Okay. And scroll down, and we're looking for one function that is. Let me just up the font size a little bit here. Yeah. All right, we're looking for. Uh, fetch tweet from storage. Nope, the next one down. Fetch vision description async. So oh, look at that. So All this right. is our code. This is what we want to steal and put into your project. Mm. Okay. Right. So you're you have a subscription key that you're using with an HTTP client. You're passing. <clears throat> I'm guessing this media URL we see here on line 65. That's where 
Azure can find that photo. That's a, that is an actual URL. That's right. So if you look at what I'm passing in on line 57 is a Twitter status. Okay. That's all the JSON of who you are, what your ID is. Mm. Uh, and then the Twitter media, before I call this function on line 57, I've already looked at the media, I've found the URL, and I've, I've put that together. By the way, none of that is my code. That all comes from a great open source project. I think it's Tweet Sharp. That oh, yes, you, yes. You, you, you can find that. Uh, there are several great maintainers. Uh, in the readme, I give a big thanks and a, a shout out. Okay. I love other people's code that just works. Oh, yeah. And that lets me as a consumer, even the, the Vision API code that we're talking about, like as a consumer, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even write this code. I stole, really? Well, I, I, I used the code in documentation. Uh, okay, in, so you were in you were inspired docs. by the yeah. documentation. Exactly. In fact, I do that even if you look at line seventy six, if it's big enough to see. Um, yeah, they can see it now. I zoomed the, in a bit. Uh, I try to put these documentation links everywhere. Like this is how you get your environment variable. So if somebody's looking at the the code, then hopefully there's just a quick link, and then you know it takes you right to to that spot. Right. So. I, I had to write the glue of this, mm. but I mean, if I'm just honest with everybody, and I think the audience has done this on their own, like I, I really didn't write any code. I literally just glued a whole bunch of stuff together, yeah, which yeah. I I think is fair. Like I ended up with a good solution. Oh yeah, but I can't take. Well, I can only take credit for the gluing. <laughs> sure, you didn't write it's. It, it's not that that you invented each of these pieces, but you figured out a cool way to glue them all together. Right, right, and hopefully that's that's interesting to people to see. So let me let's let's just roll over to the chat room. A couple folks that we have commented here about. Yes, we're we've got a different green screen here today. We're using the green screen in mm. in building eighteen in the room that our friend Damian Edwards usually uses for the ASP.NET community stand-up. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Damien, if you're out there. Hello. Thank all, you. All of the blood, sweat, and tears is, uh, again, we're using somebody we're using else's somebody stuff. else's room. There's going to be a theme here today. Oh, I yes. I feel this. Absolutely. Right. Um, so it, the lighting's not perfect in here, but it, you know what? It works good enough for, for what we're doing here today. Hopefully the code is more important than Absolutely. Our, right. our faces. That's why we're so small and down here in the corner. Right. Um. Let's see. Good programmers reuse code. Great programmers steal code. Well, Paula, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think we're stealing. It's we're sharing it liberally. Yeah, uh, it's not stealing if the MIT license says please use and abuse and do with what you wish. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. this code. So. So. Uh, and all of the docs, our docs are open source. So if something's wrong, you can easily fix that. Uh, you've probably talked about that before. Oh yeah, we we had Myra um, on back in January. Oh, nice. And we went through and showed here's how to edit and maintain docs. Oh yeah. Right. Which is it, it's just awesome. Uh, it's a little bit of a tangent, but GitHub was on stage and they were just bragging about Microsoft uh, it's being on stage the, at Build. Oh yeah, on, sorry, we're at the Build conference, and so I took that part for granted. Uh, sure. But Build was just bragging about Microsoft having the largest open source ecosystem, and I think Docs has a big thing to do, right? Like, oh my gosh, Docs is yes is the most important, particularly with language support and you know languages not English, I should say, translation and coverage around the world. So. Hopefully we're doing a good job with that. And if we're not, let us know. And you know, that's that's actually an, another part of my job is to help with with documentation, not necessarily to to write it, but to make sure that we don't have glaring missing parts and pieces, etc. So, cool. Anyway, all right. So here's where. All right. So from an Azure function, here's how you get an environment variable, which it, that kind of makes sense. This segment down here, right? I mean, we know how to do system environment get environment variable. Yeah. I mean, as a as a long time .NET developer. Yeah, right? Right. No, but what's interesting is knowing that it's running on Azure and in the cloud, I can still use the same methods yeah. that I would use on my servers and my my desktop. So you and I have a, a problem that is in common in that we have secrets. So in order for this to work, you need an Azure account, and then you need a connection string. And in that connection string is essentially a username and password for the API, right? I mean, that's what you're doing at the end of the day is saying, trust who I am because I have this information. Mm -hmm. But I open source this on GitHub. So if you flip back to your GitHub tab and, uh, yeah, so scroll back to the beginning of the project. Oh, look, you have an Octo tree installed. Yeah, yeah. 
Ah. Oh. Okay. So this guy was just pointing at the little arrow here in the corner of the screen. In this my in notes, a, I have a tip trick to teach you about OctoCat, but you already have it. Yes. So this is an add-in for Firefox. It's also in, in Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, to give you right the, the file hierarchy of, of your project. Number one Chrome extension. And uh, do you remember earlier I asked what browser you're going to use today? Yeah, yeah. I said... Because I didn't know you were using this already, and mm. I was going to give this to to you in the audience, but you already have it. Again, <laughs> utilizing someone else's success. But... Yes, right? Plugins. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, we can actually put a link out into the, uh, into the uh, video description later if folks want to install and get this in their browser. Yeah. It's called Octotree. Yes. And it's, it's phenomenal. As, as you can see, the idea is to very quickly traverse uh, a repo... Instead of having to click through the header navigation and then look at the list of files, this just gives you a fancy tree view. So it's beautiful. And nice icons. Yeah. 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 Um, so where we were at before, look at uh, local settings, JSON. All right. And so these are my secrets. Well, they're not all of your secrets, right? Actually, I mean, you're, you're kind of hiding them here a little bit. Exactly. So when I did this the first time, I just mainlined or I hard-coded the credentials right in the API call on the mm -hmm. screen we were looking at before. Uh, but then I thought, well, I can't open source this. I could open source it and change the credentials because then the API calls would break. Sure. Or I could just give some guidance and tell people, like, Put put your stuff here. Yeah, putting these these I like the the way you've put these tags here on on lines 10, 11, 12, and thirteen, even up in here a little bit, you know, to say, hey, hey, dummy, put this is where you put <laughs> this is where you put those values. I don't know, you know? about hey, dummy. Oh, uh, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to come up with a convention that just basically said all of this is ready to go if you wanted to replicate this, but. Everything inside these angle brackets are like tokens that need to be replaced with your with your real values. Yeah, okay. Um, and actually, one of the hardest things that I had to do is convince my local Git repository to ignore that file at the right time. Because you want the file there in order to push it to GitHub. Yeah. But then in order to do my local debugging, I have to actually have my real the, values here. Right. But right. then when I make a change and do a push to master, I don't want to push those. Yeah. And the truth is, I don't know how I did it. But somewhere on Stack Overflow, there's a walkthrough that says, here's how you uh, uh, a trick, maybe is a good word, or convince, or do the right thing to say, add the file, get it set up with your mock variables, commit the file, push the file. So that's what GitHub sees. And then it's not just so. The first thing I tried was dot git ignore. So wait, hang on, hang on. I'm I'm looking at this and thinking in my mind. I'm thinking, oh, ASP.NET Core. I have my user secrets file that's sitting in, in somewhere else on disk. Ah, uh, yeah. But this isn't ASP.NET Core. Right. This is for an Azure, Azure function. function. That's right. So okay, so you you have these stubbed out values, but you then push it out to Azure. But well, I push it to GitHub, and then GitHub is is deploying to Azure. That's right. Okay. Um, and then inside Azure, there's an app settings um, that you can override all these values. And that brings us back full circle to what you mentioned with environment.get variable. Because environment.get variable says, hey, environment, I'm looking for, in this case, an app setting. Okay. And in that case, it's not coming from this file, local settings JSON. It goes to the portal where I can just type in. And I, I basically replicate the key value pairs. Okay. Uh, and I say, you know, vision API URI base is then this. Sure. So you have that only sitting inside of Azure. Right. You don't actually have it on any of your machines locally. That's right. Okay. That's okay. Right. Um, so anyway, so I started to fix that with a dot .git ignore, mm. which turned out to be the wrong solution because dot .git ignore... Um, it does something where it actually it doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. And again, I'm I'm by no means a Git expert. I but but that was an exercise I had to figure out yet again with somebody else's help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, in GitHub now we have hopefully this project with all of the source code that we'll need. So to get you started, I think we need to use some of these links 
And again, I have the tiny URL there at the end of line uh, seven. So you have to go into your Azure account and instantiate Vision API if you don't already have it. I do not. Um, you know what? Paula Bean is pointing something out here. The next evolution might be some wallet or keychain which safely stores all your ah. API keys. Well, yeah. that's Azure Key Vault. That's Azure Key Vault. That's right. So, and so the, the reason that I'm not using Azure Key Vault here is because my intention of this code is to give it to the public, and I actually want you to use it. Now, I guess I could have said, here's a Key Vault key. You use your Key Vault, but I would have still then had to abstract the connection string to their key vault. So that that's an abstraction I don't think is appropriate when I'm, you know, we're writing educational code to just say, uh, use this. But you're absolutely right. If I have secrets I want to keep, I want to put them in key vault. And the benefit there is I can let you use it without knowing the secret. Exactly. Right? I can also change it without affecting you. Right. So that's another beautiful thing with secret maintenance. Mm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Paula. Key Vault is a great place to store key secrets, um, and and I would and I would highly recommend that. Unless your job, like me, is to give away code for other people to use, and then um, the ease of access to get yeah. to those settings. Actually, even that is not something. right. I should clarify. Like, I probably could use Key Vault, but I just want to make sure everybody understands. I would still have had to do this to hide my Key Vault connection string. So that's yet another secret that I wouldn't want to give so in the code, right? So what's interesting about, about Key Vault, and I'm going to come to, um, Eldorian has a question that we're going to come to in a second. Um, Key Vault uses this concept of, they call it an uh, MSI, right? A managed service identity. Yeah. So when you're running inside of Azure, it knows the identity of who is running that Azure account. And if you've granted that application access to the Key Vault, all you have to tell your application is, here's the URL for my key vault, right. and it doesn't actually have to sign in. It's almost like that same integrated Windows authentication mm. we used to rely on on Windows servers. Right. Right. The window, your Windows server is in the same domain as your database, so you had integrated Windows authentication that said, oh, because this service is granted access to the database, right. it's allowed to just connect and log so in. So we give an account to the application. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and Eldorian asks, does Azure Key Vault allow you to store connection strings and other things too? Absolutely. Not just, you know, things like your Twitter secrets, your, um, uh, it's gosh, not your just passwords, tokens. but there's a whole security certificate. Absolutely. Edge. It's, 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 uh, you're right. Security certificates, uh, connection strings, passwords, um, tokens, all kinds of things you can store in there and fetch and use inside of your application. Have you guys talked about Key Vault on the show yet? We have not. So there you go. So Something we'll have to do future. that at some point. That, that's one of those things that, again, as a consumer, I I'm definitely not an expert level, but I, I understand how to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I understand how to use a portion of it, but you can use Key Vault for the secure certificates to SSL sign your traffic, and there's yes. a whole... Oh, yeah. Bunch of that. So that, that'll be interesting for future shows. So uh, Mr. Reg says VS App Center also has this. Yes, it does, I believe. You are correct. Yeah. Uh, Octotree is awesome. Just shared it to my entire organization. Yeah. That's great, Mr. Regs. I'm glad to hear you found something. The only there. thing you'll find with OctoKey is that for private repos, it's got a nice UI that will pop up and say, please give me the shared token that you can create. And it even walks you through how to do that. But by default, this is just using the GitHub API. And it says, oh, by convention, I know you're in this repo. Traverse the tree and paint the file. So it works great in public repos like what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, but for private repos, you'll have an extra step there, which may be a surprise to some people. OK. Um, Brendan asks, uh, user secrets. I want it in non-ASP.NET Core projects. Yeah. Funny you should ask. My team built that. So I, I'm going to take a second here and just show. If you go github.com and it is... Um, Zoom into the URL. For I'll get there in a second. I believe it's ASP.NET Microsoft Configuration Builders. There it is. So here we are. At ASP.NET Microsoft Configuration Builders, this is now a public repository. And, Isn't that great? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, stepping down through here, we have a user secrets configuration builder that you can add to your web config or app config. 
and start using user secrets with a .NET Framework application. So this is available as of .NET Framework, I believe it's 4.7.1. Uh, you can do it with 472 also, and then this is a NuGet package that you can install and take advantage of user secrets in your, your .NET framework. It sounds projects. like you need a whole show just on secrets. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Back to the... Back, back to, to this. The... Let's, um, let me go over to my Azure portal then and configure a Vision API yeah. so that we can start wiring up. So that is portalazure.com. Sign in. I'm going to sign in with this account. That password. 2FA. Come on. The whole audience. We're, all these secrets. We just. Uh... Oh, it was 2FA yesterday, but you're within the zone. I am. That. Yes. <laughs> there you go. I turn it on for 30 days from this machine. All right. So do your use your search and so type information. I actually have a dashboard for stuff here on the stream. Yes, I have accounts. Go away. I don't need these. All right, we want to look for the Vision API. Right? That's from there. And wake up, Azure. There we go. So there's stuff from our demo with Oren. First rule of user secrets. Don't show your secrets on stream. Uh, thank you, Popsicle. Did we yes. do that accidentally? No, I did not. I have done it several times in the past. That's a, I mean, secrets are easy to change. It's just painful. And, you know, when you're writing a project with the intention of giving it away and basically saying, Con, you know, now, now I'm the, the expert giving stuff out and you're the consumer and you say consumer insert variables here, mm -hmm. uh, then, okay, so let's try your search again now that the dashboard is loaded. Just maybe delete. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now I'm getting some of that. So, oh, you know what? I do have a cognitive service that I started. <clears throat> I spent a month telling Jeff to get a no peeking screen. He didn't do it until he revealed his secrets on stream. Well, you know what? I've been rotating through different scene collections here, and I, I didn't copy it over to this scene collection. But I do have installed this extension that will oh, mask yeah. all secrets. Bitmask. So this is a, something a friend of mine wrote, and uh, I'm sure you've talked about this before. This basically looks for GUIDs and secrets mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. lets you present on stage or, in this case, live stream. Uh, the copy-paste buttons still work. But yes. you know now you can. But it's copy blurred stuff. in right. the uh, web user interface. Right. All right. So I should have keys here, and I need to also grab that URL. Right. If I look back at your code. Right. Um, I need a subscription key, and then I need my URI base. Right. Azure Vision API subscription key. So I think you can get that with just the keys. So if I click here. Right. Yeah. Look at that. Um, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take key two. Why? I, I'm paranoid about key one. Uh, Mr. Regs asked, "What was that called again? The blurring tool. This up here. It's called Bitmask. B I T M A S K. And that's available. That's available for Edge, Firefox, and Chrome. Hmm, I don't know. I thought I saw it for Edge also. Azure Mask is what uh, our friend Chris is." mentioning here. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll find Might it. be it. Okay. Um, all right, so I've copied my key. Now, I would normally go over here and have my project file open, right? So I'm going to go into my stream tools project. This is where I build all the widgets that we use here on stream. Like that goal bar you see up at the top, the number of viewers. It's over on that side. There it is. Way up in the corner there. So... Just loaded it myself, Isaac says. 30,000 free monthly free calls to the Vision Face API. I enjoy how large the quotas are. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's definitely something to yeah. to say. You know, Microsoft is, is trying to enable you to, to give this a try and build something cool. I, uh, a friend of mine reached out to me who's using this for a real estate company. 
Yeah. And they are defining things like whether or not the house is furnished or unfurnished. Okay. So imagine uploading a picture, and if you get back some metadata that says there's a table or a couch, then that's furnished. That's a picture that has furniture in it. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then also whether the photos are indoors or outdoors, which you can tell with like the keys and different things. Sure. And even with the hundreds of photos that they're using, it's not. it doesn't cost anything because wow. they're not hitting those quotas. Wow. Mr. Reg says, couldn't find Bitmask. All right. Yeah, maybe it's Azure Mask. Let's not get sidetracked with that, though. All right, fine. fine I mean, fine, we'll, fine. We'll, we'll get there. Try Azure Mask. So I would normally open my user secrets at this point and start keying in values. I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's actually identify where we want to put these keys down here in app settings. So I have all these settings for logging, for the different stream services to connect to. Here's the bot and my Q&A knowledge base ID. Okay. So now this is up to you. Like This is where you're going to know your project and your code. Yeah. Uh, essentially, you're going to need a service API. So let's call this the Vision API base URL. Vision API base URL. And this is public. There's no secret there. Right. And then you're going to need the, the API key. So let's call it Vision API key. And you just put whatever in there. Right? Not keying it in here and making that mistake. <laughs> Again. Again. There we go. All right. So um, I've copied that onto the clipboard. So here's what I'm going to do so that I don't share it on screen. I'm going to go back to just our faces. All right. While I right click and open my user secrets for the project. And I, I won't look at those. In fact, while you're doing that, I have some something for you. So oh, keep, no. Keep, keep your focus. Okay. Okay. I have these things I call bribes. I mean, gifts. <laughs> and I know you have a special diet, but yes. I tried to buy things that would be within your diet. There so, you go. Okay. So uh, Hershey's Pens Pennsylvania chocolate. There you go. All right. You know, a little home. A little, Absolutely. Little bring it home. This also came up. I was in the store. I did a search for. Yeah. Can I said, what's the type of candy that Jeff Fritz could eat? <laughs> and it came back with York. York. Candy. Okay. Okay. So I got a couple of those. Oh my gosh. And then the last thing, which I think is actually the best. Okay, Th this is, is yeah, Reese's is, that's my kryptonite, all right? Uh, all right? Shouldn't go there. I shouldn't go there. I bought eight of them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is going to be a problem, Scott. So, um, all right, I need to copy over my FritzBot entry here and put it in the user secrets. So I'm, let me get that moving here. And then I'm going to pull out those values. Perfect. Copy the key again because I've done that wrong. There we go. All right, so I've got, and the key is just a, it, it's gosh, a good. That, yeah, it's a go it, right? It's a hash of something, right? Right. So close that. So now, all right, and I'll go okay. back and we can show our code again. Nice. So let's go back and steal some more variables from my project. Well, I need I need to get that base URL. Yeah, that's what I mean. So go back oh, to go okay. back to GitHub. Okay. So and here, right here, copy the value of line eight. All right. So this is Vision API version one dot analyze. Okay. So copy that in, and then I don't know what region you're in, so we'll have to look at that. By the way, I got tripped up on this line a little bit, line thirty five. Because in the portal, it gives you the URL, uh, but it doesn't give you the method that you're going to call. So the truth is the base URL here is vision API, or vision slash v1.0. Okay. But the method we're calling is analyze. There are other methods like convert and shrink, and you, you could do a lot of stuff with vision API. We're only using analyze. Okay. So if by chance in the future you wanted to extend this project to look at video tracing or time boxing or oh, wow. getting face recognition, yeah. you'll you'll change that method from analyze to something else or maybe even get rid of it and then pass that to the service that you're calling. So so let me let me think about this API again as an ASP.NET developer. When I build an API and I have my controller and I might have those methods hanging off yeah. of it. Analyze isn't actually another another web page that I'm navigating to. It's a method. It's an endpoint. 
Yeah, it's an it's an endpoint method on that 1.0 location. That's right. And there's other methods hanging out there. Is yeah. what you're telling us. In fact, all right, I got you. While we're here, let's look back at the GitHub repo for just a second. Sure. Uh, so you have this base URI now, and take a look back at helper, and inside helper, you'll see in that method that we called out earlier. Uh, look at line 63. Mm. So get the base URI and then add the parameters to it. And the parameters come from line 62, which are the features. These are basically the query string that I'm pushing to that base URL. So here I could say analyze or shrink or, you know, I, I could have put the method name here. But in my case, my singular and sole purpose of this is to call the analyze method. Hmm. So that, but I, I wanted to throw that out because I failed originally in the Azure API when they say call this web service, they're giving you the base URL, which is vision version 1.0 at the time. Maybe it's sure more now. Um, but then in the, um, in the documentation later, I found that analyze word because I was getting 404s. Uh, which is like, we don't know what you're trying to talk about. And so anyway, it tripped me up. So throwing right. that out there. Looks like we're having a problem with... The stream? With uh, Twitch. There's a little bit of lag going out right now. We're, it says we're a little unstable, but I'm hitting... I'm still pushing... Yeah, my well Twitch here. stream has actually reverted back to another video with you and somebody else. We, uh, that was yesterday with uh, with Bree and um, Aditi and Ankit. No, I've actually got. I've actually. It's red here, but I'm still pushing. Pretty good. And we're on a wired connection here. Very fast connection going out to Twitch. Let me just check twitchstatus.com. Thank you for in the comments for letting us know. Yeah, yeah, we weren't paying attention to that just then. Everything's online and no errors and running very well, it looks like. Yeah, now I'm dropping frames. No, we're we're green. Yeah, I wonder if this machine is starting to uh <laughs> I wonder if it's downloading Windows updates. There we go. My CPU is not even 50. It's 50% roughly. Looks like we might be back. Cleared on their end. Yeah. All right. We'll keep an eye on that. Okay. Uh, where did we end? No, so so we're going to... We'll just, should we just recap that URI again real quick? No, I think we're still good. So we, we have that URI that says analyze, and we're going to pass into it and instruct it on line 62 to define these visual features and return it in English, and that's the language at the end. Right. Got it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, so that whole tangent was started because I'm hard coding analyze in the base URL. Right. Right. Okay. That's not terrible. Okay. Um, so uh, Squanchin, um, we're about to wire up the Azure Vision API so that it can analyze pictures that folks post into our chat room. Nice. Okay. Uh, how are we on time? What time is oh, it? Oh, we're fantastic on time. All right. So let's use... Um, I'm so excited about Live Share. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Let's get um, let's get get you connected with Live Share. Let's get connected with Live Share, and I'm gonna uh, take some notes. Okay. And then we'll get this implemented in your project, and hopefully, sure, find some success so in the next. Hour. The last thing that I wanted to look up before we start connecting with Live Share, you were saying we need to put the region into into our oh, yeah. where, I, where my region that I'm that I have uh, uh, my. Right. Cognitive service connected here. So on your overview of cognitive service, you can see the endpoint. If you can zoom into that for people. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at that one. Right. So I'm in East U.S. Right. And so this is where I'm saying, see how it just says Vision 1.1.0? Yeah. I, I was tripped up because I, in order to call the analyze method, I didn't have that because it 
the documentation actually does tell me. I just didn't read it. Mm. So for others that might be trying this, you have to put the method on there that you want to call. Isn't that always the way, though? We, we get in, we start writing code, and then we, then we trip up, and it's like, oh, i got to go check documentation yeah. now. Exactly. Yeah. Like, why is this 404-ing on me? So anyway, that's the same URL. You just need to paste in the... Um, I'll just grab East US. Perfect. And then we can go over, fill in that last setting here. You just replace the whole thing because I don't. Uh, did you have API did dot it cognitive? It may have. Oh yeah, so yours. There it looks are. like that was shorter for some reason. Oh, because you had analyze on the end. All right. Okay. There All right. Go. Good. All right. So now let's. You you want to jump in and yeah and let's, connect. Let's do so, uh, live code. So I I have my machine is a Mac with Parallels. I have okay. three. No, I'm sorry. I have four versions of Visual Studio installed. I have Visual Studio Windows, VS Code, VS Code Mac. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I let's see say, what happens. Now, now you're starting to sound like a member of the Visual Studio team. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to have all the versions. Uh, I, yesterday I was actually live sharing with myself. With, oh my gosh. with Windows and Parallels windowed in a Mac on VS Code. And as I type, I could see the echo coming back. It's sides. phenomenal. I'm yes. very excited about oh, yeah. this. It is I, very cool. I think Live Share is, I tweeted this yesterday and it got a little traction. I think Live Share is maybe the number one productivity increase of my entire career. Mm, which okay. is a lot to say, but think about it. When's the last time you pair programmed with somebody? I mean, you do it on the show a lot, but sure. like for production, you sit down and you say, hey, let's both, let's two people work on something for two hours or one hour. Right. You could screen share. Um, I used to have a central monitor with two USB keyboards. That works pretty good. Okay. Uh, you so can you're not do passing it. the keyboard back and yeah. forth and fighting over so it. So we have one monitor, you and I are both partying on it, and then... We still can. We still fight though, because ultimately we're sharing one cursor. Mm. Uh, we could also screen share. You know, we could do Teams. Right. We could do Skype, Skype, and you're and you're passing. Then you're just passing pixels back That's and right. forth. And I can't. I can't touch the screen. Mind blown when I saw Live Share remote debugging. So you're running, and and I dived into this a little bit yesterday uh, on how it works. It's extremely secure in that I don't have anything, I don't have any remnants on my machine. Yep. Uh, in fact, uh, th we're a little bit on a tangent, but I think this is okay. That's fine. If you're, if you're Absolutely. Fine. Have you heard of, uh, have you guys talked about Blazor on the show? We we talked about it briefly about two months ago, but we, we need to come back to that one. So that, this is an experimental project for Microsoft that's basically taking Razor and compiling it to WebAssembly. Yep, it's yep. Experimental. We don't know if it's going to live or die or, or get traction or what. But what's exciting is I was trying to trip up LiveShare. I thought WebAssembly and the compiler is definitely not something that they've thought about. So on machine A, I did a, little, a quick file new Blazor project compile. Yeah. Then I did live share, and when you one of the things with live share is is remote debugging so that the port forwarding from your machine actually works on my machine, and they were able to run Blazor on their side with oh, the yeah. WebAssembly and the DLLs and everything. I was just shocked. And then you have shared terminal. Right. Like, ah, oh, it's so, so good. We we did a show. <laughs> Can on, you tell I'm excited? Oh yeah, we did a show on Tuesday, and actually Eldorian and Sinclairinator, two of our regular viewers here, joined me in person mm. at the live share booth oh. here at Build. Because you can have more than one share. You can have five. Ah. So we had we had those two, and we had we actually had the program manager of Live Share, Jonathan Carter, joining us, and we were working together through one of our projects. So folks on Twitch could see what we were doing. Folks that were there at Build could see what we were doing on these giant mm. screens, and we were able to collaborate and work on different pieces of the application. I the can't even time. believe the productivity that that's going to have. I mean, oh yeah, oh, um, yeah. The, it's a whole new meaning to hey, do you have a minute? Exactly. <laughs> now right. you might actually solve a problem in the minute I, instead of like I can't doesn't run on my machine works over here that's environment my colors work your colors work like ah it's, it's so good I like line numbers on the side of, of on the side of my screen you might not yeah so what I think so what folks need to know out there 
Um, Eldorian is saying mob programming for the win with LiveShare. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And it's completely free. LiveShare actually makes direct connections between machines and uses uses a completely secure TLS connection. It is secured, but I, I found out yesterday, depending on the scenario, and I don't know what that scenario is, but there is a proxy in the middle somewhere. If it can't make a direct connection. Yeah. I, I want to find out more because one of the questions that came up, this is a great question, is privacy. Like, I mean, it's our source code. So yes. is is Microsoft looking at our source code? And the answer is no, but I want to know... Sometimes you want to know more about how and the why versus just trusting what's on the surface, mm-hmm. right? So I, I need to dig deeper into that. But I'm told that that is, uh, you know, it's encrypted end to end and it's safe. And it is. Thought about it everything. is. It, it, yeah, that proxy, like I said, only to get them to reconnect to connect if you can't see each other. Right. If there's a firewall or something in the yeah. way. And there's a. Uh, it's not just source code. It's the symbols. It's IntelliSense. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's IntelliCode, which is the new... See, yes. we're, we're way, way off oh, track. Oh, way off track. Um, <laughs> it, it, it relays everything about the experience. And um, Space Shot is commenting here. It, yes, as part of the build announcements, LiveShare is in public preview now. Anybody can download and use it. Yep. So. I, and, and so I'd seen it a whole bunch. I saw it on your show. Yep. Uh, I've seen it in preview. Uh, I got an email about early access, but I never had a chance to use it until yesterday. Mm. And I installed it everywhere. I installed it on all my... All my your Visual instance. Studios. <laughs> <laughs> my, my plethora of Visual Studios. So, right, and since Visual Studio Code runs it on Linux... Yes. Folks that are writing C++ and Go on Linux can live share with each other. Yeah. Think about those open source projects that have mobs of people working together. It's just, it's so phenomenal. Yes. And because it's more than code, it's the symbols and the debugging. Uh, what that means, by the way, is my machine does not have to have installed what you have installed, but I see IntelliSense from your machine. Exactly. So yesterday when I was doing that Blazor example, the IntelliSense from my machine was was tunneled through to their editor uh and uh it's just uh, it was so much fun i mean i really think that's the number one career advancement for all developers sure is basically to, to say be able to collaborate three like four or five editors at once um and oh my gosh uh, no opcat that's uh that's our friend Suze hinton thank you for the resub um Suze is great. Suze is she, has a, she has an amazing stream amazing on Sundays. Um, I, I was inspired by her. I saw her doing all that great JavaScript uh, yeah. building that she does on on uh, Sunday mornings. And uh, I, I thought it'd be great to do that with .NET. And here we are now, it's 70 inspiring. years later. Yeah. So I, I'm so honored to, ha- to work with everybody on the team. <laughs> like, I, I get all this stuff for free. Like, I'm here. Yeah. You've done all of the work. And I just get to share... We're still only sharing four lines of code, by the way. <laughs> and we're not there yet. Yeah. Let's get there. All yeah. right. So I click the share button up here, and it's reminding me that I'm in auto connection mode, and it's going to uh, work with the firewall as needed. All so right. now there's a URL on your clipboard. This is a one-time run thing, by the way. Once yeah. it's done, then it's done. Um, so I will grant it access. Yes, go ahead. They should put a, a URL on your clipboard. So yep. I think we decided earlier you're just gonna uh, share this to me, Twitter DM, right? Yep, I'll do it. I'll do a Twitter DM now so that I don't share it. I'm gonna go back to the full face. I mean, that, this is such Twitter. a long URL. I don't think anybody could even could copy could even it. Use it. And even if they did click it, which they can't co- possibly type everything in, but you get a. Um, I get the ability to reject. Yeah. You have to see that. So there it is over on Twitter DM for you. All right. Let's go back to the regular screen or the stream because my um, my machine's not even up there. So we can go back here and I can close the bar here and we should see next to this sharing entry here, we should see uh, Scott's connection information come in there. I I still have to sign in and and get the URL uh, going. So give me a second. Yep. Oh my gosh, Sue says she did .NET last week. Her first ever UWP. Oh nice. my gosh. Writing writing a Windows application. All right, now I've got to go back and check that out. Uh, just never know it was something that could be done. 
Oh, about live share, Eldorian is saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's pretty new, so a lot of people don't know it can be done. Um, okay, Twitter, tons of DMs and messages. Um, at Scott Kate is my Twitter handle, by the way, if you have questions about this. You can see it up there at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my URL is livesharevisualstudio.com. What I don't know, I'm going to click this in a second, I don't know which editor it's going to grab. <laughs> so somewhere there's a because you've got so many registered. But I guess it doesn't matter, right? Right. Okay, so here we go. Click. Opens a URL. It says, uh, open, pick an app from Chrome, which is forwarding. Oh, look, it gives me a choice. So so that, that chooser that you get. Can we well, do this? Is this even go, a thing? Go, can that work? Uh, let's see if this Go ahead, see if you can see it. So, this is like, like. So now I was in right. Chrome. And now Move I it over see... just a smidge. There you go. Oh. So now you can see the little chooser. Because I have so many versions of Studio installed. Uh, so that's good. So the protocol basically is registered for all of those apps. Uh, so uh, my preferred app is the full version of Visual Studio. So I will click that. And then hopefully uh, you'll get a message back that says Scott has that joined Scott's your joining. Code. So while you, we're waiting for that to connect, uh, so Sue's built a Windows IoT core for Raspberry Pi. Oh, that's very cool. Mm. Uh, Eldorian, when use when uh, at build with me, he thought using Live Share with QA would be really awesome. So so what what uh, Eldorian Jr was saying is if if QA says to me, you know what, Jeff, I found a problem in the web app. I can start debugging on my machine with them live share connected. Mm -hmm. It opens a browser on their machine. They can navigate around to whatever it is, the scenario that they have. And when they hit that point, I can put a breakpoint in there. Yeah. And we can both see the debugger and yeah. look at what's going on I, as they've completed that scenario. I mean, I want somebody to mark on their calendar six months from now to get back with me. And tell me if live share has changed your life as much yes. as I think it will. Because so, you know what? It's 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 amazing. You know what? Let's talk to people at Ignite. Oh, that's great because that's in September. It's in September, yeah. end of September. So, yeah, let's. Uh, look so at mar that. mark your calendars for Ignite. We'll talk to people about has it has it changed things changed for you? Things. So uh, you can see up here on the top of the screen. Let's mouse over there. Scott Kate has joined your collaboration session. And there's my email if anybody needs it. There you go. And up here in the top corner, you can see a little icon for Scott having joined. And now, now I, on my machine, I literally, I can snoop through the whole project. I can go to places. Uh, one thing I found yesterday when I was playing with this, our clipboards are not shared. They are not. Which, because, is, which I think is a good thing. Yes. Um, I definitely agree with you on that. Because now if you paste something... Uh, if you copy something, I can't paste it. Which, right. for example, the uh, the share link you just Twitter DM'd me. Mm -hmm. uh, if with the shared clipboard thing, which I can see some benefits to in some cases, but I think there's a privacy boundary there where they're smart to not share the clipboard. Right. I don't. It, right. I can continue to copy and paste whatever I want, and you can continue to copy and paste. Yeah. We're we're still on two machines for that. The, the shared clipboard thing might be nice if you were sharing with yourself. Like, I know that sounds weird, but there's a lot of environments where I have actually, like in screen recording, recording I do want to transfer something from one machine to another. But anyway, that, that's beside there's, the point. Shared clipboard is not supported, which is what I'm bringing up. There's a Billy Idol song spoof that needs to be done for VS Live Share, coding with yourself. <laughs> I code with myself. Is that Anyways, really right, right? It was right. It was it, dancing with myself was the name of the song, but yes. All right. Uh, must be nice to have QA on their team. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. QA can is Scott, great. Can Scott Kate see the value of your settings from user secrets while debugging? Uh, the answer is. Uh, yes. The answer is where are your user secrets? Where is your file? It's outside of the project, but when debugging, when we mouse over, right, and we and we look at the watch for that value that's been passed yeah. in, you'll be able to see it. That's right, because those come across in the in the debugging things. Mm -hmm. Now, I can imagine a future where now this is something we've never 
even thought about before. So there's no solution because this problem never existed. But I can imagine something in the future where you might have, and and I should even before I go down this thought path, I don't know the team, I don't know what they're doing. This is not any sort of promise, but I can imagine like a a non shareable or some sort of secret uh, symbol mm -hmm. where it does not in fact go across the wire, uh, because I may I may deem that you know, my SQL Server connection string is not someone I want to share with someone on the public side that's going to be maybe be helping me. But I, I think in the in a future version, there are certainly things to think about with that. So um, oh, let me interject one more thing. Sure. I can actually have access to your entire machine right now if you open up the terminal. Yes, right. So there is, if I go up to sharing, there is a shared terminal. I can... I can make it read only so you can see it, yeah. but but can't touch anything, or read write so that you can key in and actually work in the terminal. But if you give me read write, I can actually navigate to your root drive. I can traverse your whole machine. Yeah. Um, now, theoretically, you're in a responsible place where you're using that, and you can cut me off any time should I do something you don't Absolutely. want me to. But yeah, with live share, you are actually pair programming, and you're effectively bringing someone into your computer. So use that with caution, right? I wouldn't right. put a There's... live share on Reddit and say, "Hey, whoever everybody wants come to do join." This. Yeah, right. Mm. Like you, I mean, or maybe you would in an AMA or 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 some sort of secured environment, but just know the limitations but, of what's there. Right. There's there's a point there, and this is a, a requested feature that the folks have where I want to make it read only to all those other people. Mm -hmm. Right now, because you're connected, you have read-write access to the code, mm -hmm. right? When I start lighting up and turning on my shared server, when, I, when I'm running the web application, you're going to be able to see the web application running and connect to that server. I wonder if for live stream, you could do a read-only, and in addition to Twitch, people could actually watch you in an editor. Right. Yeah. So is that limited to five also? Read only well, is they haven't done read only yet. That's a feature oh, request that's hanging out there, and they're also looking at expanding that number of connections. Right. Okay. Um, uh, Noopcat says glitch.com hides secrets from pair programmers, but they don't have a shared debugging runtime. Mm. There you go. the The question and the problem and what what Brendan was pointing out there is when I'm further into my code here. So if I were to go up here and bring up. Um, let me go into the chat bot here because there's an Azure Q&A command that I'm using right now to get my subscription key from configuration. At this point here on line 26, I'm, right, that's that's hiding in a string. It doesn't know, mm -hmm. right? The, there's no way for Visual Studio to know, you know, this is a secret to hide, right? right? So because LiveShare works with so many different languages and frameworks, how do we know which right. ones to say, oh, hide this, don't share it. So there's 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 a good problem there that needs to be solved. And I mean, use responsible, you're sharing your source code with someone. That's clearly a, a, a befriend, befriended person. Well, that, that actually kind of leads to what Kixon is saying here. Live share on Reddit sounds like an awesome idea because nothing ever, nothing bad ever happened on the internet. And we know, we know that our friends on Reddit, they're they're nice and friendly people yeah. on Reddit. <laughs> That's great. Why don't, you, why don't you just share a live share connection out to 4chan while you're at it? Well, if it's read only, <laughs> I really like the idea for following along and educating. I could see ed in an educational environment, an instructor yes. or yes. what you're doing with your workshops. Yes. Um, I think it would be great for people to follow along, not by passing pixels on Twitch, but just write in the editor. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, you can imagine a day where somebody might just be looking at your live stream as your your face. Mm -hmm. And then the editor is actually what they're is watching. Be, the, that the data code. is being passed back. In fact, th I think that's so much more interactive because I can traverse this entire project. And if it's in a secure read only space uh, without the debugger attached where they can't see things, then yeah, I, I like the idea. So, you know, it's, it's day two of a preview feature <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with so, many years to come. I'm sure it looks like, um, I, I didn't see the alert pop up, but, uh, looks like our friend, um, I am a meat popsicle. I hate, I hate saying your full handle there, but, uh, thank you for your subscription for renewing there. Um, with both uh, No Opcat and Meat Popsicles sub resubscriptions, there we're going to match those subscriptions. 
Um, and I don't, I don't keep the su- subscription dollars. I turn around and I donate to Girl Develop It, right? That's mm. an organization that helps to teach women and underprivileged uh, minorities and other folks to learn how to write code just like we're doing here nice. on stream. And then Microsoft matches that. And Microsoft matches that. So effectively, your subscriptions get quadrupled. Mm-hmm. And we make a nice big donation to That's Girl great. Develop It. I didn't now, even know, I didn't know there was money involved in any of this. So, and that's just it. I I'm doing this for fun. I don't need to be paid. When I'm, somebody I'm thrilled subscribes that, folks, that you get somehow like ten cents gets added to your account or something. Something $10, like 10 that. Ten cents, ten dollars, whatever. Something it is. like that. Okay. The, the that's numbers cool. are published and out there. I don't need to go into it here on stream. But I don't want. I don't necessarily want to keep that. You know, I don't want to say. You know, folks need to subscribe in order to see and do things here. But when you do subscribe as a token of of my thanks, I give you access to a .NET bot emote. So folks run around Twitch now, and they can use our .NET bot mm. and mention that using the C sharp bot uh, text command throughout Twitch. So you lost me. I, don't, I have no idea what all that was, but I'm okay with that. Oh my gosh! So right, no, no, it's okay. You've it's seen okay. our .NET bot, yeah. So they can use an emoji, and you've seen some emojis that folks have oh, used here in the on chat their room. Oh, avata- on their next to their name as a banner. Well, not just next to their name. Those are like status icons, but yeah. in their text. So can some of like our Noob Cat has a 17. Well, that's so that's an but, icon yeah, that that's says okay, that's okay. she went to Twitch to TwitchCon. All right. So. Um, that's a reference to the fifth element. Who said that? Fossils is saying that's a reference to the fifth element. Didn't see that. All right. All right. Let's get down into the code here. Let's let's get back to this. <laughs> there we go. There's the C sharp box. All right. Yes. Noob cat. Woohoo! So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, we're we've actually talked to some folks about no. I'm a meat popsicle. That's the reference. Yes. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, Bruce Willis. So, um, yeah, we've got some ideas what we, may, well, what we may want to do for a charity stream in October when Microsoft has a very active charity and matching month. Mm. So Give. Yes, we have a give month. So we'll see what we can do that month, something special here on stream. All right, let's get into the code. Let's actually wire this up. So... So before we get to actually calling the API, we need to identify and plug into my chat bot here. All right. So, so hang on. Be, that, that's getting too far ahead of my uh, process. So what I want to do is in your code stream, I want a, a readme file somewhere of where this feature is going to live. So either at a command level or at a, uh, like you have a text file here for squeak co- co- quotes. Somewhere give me a text file because I want to... I want to have a picture of what we're about to do with a with a little bit of documentation. Just anything anywhere I read. All right, so let's create like a readme markdown here. Or text or anything. It doesn't have to be. If we make it a readme markdown, it'll sure. you'll be able to read it on GitHub. But we don't care about formatting right now. We just wanna we just wanna sure. throw up some thoughts on the page. All right. So I'm gonna search for I think I have a markdown template here. Do we? Nope. Fine. Give me a text file and I'll rename it later. That's fine. All right. So call call this file the name of the feature. Uh, so we'll call this uh, Vision API. Readme. And we'll turn it into a readme. All right. All right. Now on my side, I'm going to... Now I created that, file, that file, so it should now be available for you. Actually, there in your sharing menu, there's a thing that says follow me. Which will force me over to where you are. Uh, all right, let me go back to. Oh, hang on, hang on. I, I navigated away from it. This. Yeah. And if I go here, I can say uh, focus, participants. focus participants, and that'll call you over to me. And then I see Jeff requested you to follow them, and I click follow, and now I'm in that screen, and I can type. So I put in a message. There you go. And now you can see my stuff. Okay. Yep. So there's All Scott right. typing. So here's how I like to, to do things. First, let's document just at 30,000 feet what we need to happen. So we need to connect to Azure. We already know that that is happening. Uh, we even have the URI that's coming in because you have the service. Right. Now you have a stream of messages. 
And when those messages come in, somehow we're going to parse the message. We're going to find if it's a command. And this command is going to be something that is going to be a hint to us that says, here's an image, go look at it. Or do we just want to look at every message? And if it has a URL in it, go, go do it. Like for your solution, do you want to A, inspect every message with every photo ever and then reply back with the description or B, do you want a command somehow that says vision API photo and then only look at what meets that criteria? That's okay. So that's a, that's a good business decision we need to make here. So right now, <clears throat> if you look on my screen here, I have an Azure Q and a command that runs out here. That isn't actually a command that you issue and say, go do this. <clears throat> excuse me. It actually inspects every, <clears throat> excuse me, every question that people post into the chat room. And if someone posts a message that ends with a question mark, it'll try to answer that question. Okay. So, so maybe it's not a command in the sense of it being a real command, but maybe it looks at the URL and says, it looks at the text and says, this looks like a URL and it ends with an JPEG extension, JPEG. yeah, a known image extension. But do you want to do that for, so you want to, I think what I'm hearing you say is you want to have all images processed and we'll feed back the, the, the description. And actually, we don't have to have a final decision now. We're just getting an yeah, idea of let's the just, flow. Let's, let's start there. If it's too much, we'll figure out how to scale it back. Okay, so let's, let's look at messages and see if it has a URL uh, with a suffix of um, of a known image type png jpeg yep j uh or whatever whatever we deem these are maybe even gifs oh the service works with animated gifs also really yeah oh that's cool it, it, it is cool uh brendan points out in the chat room uh links are already blocked so brendan's right currently i'm using nightbot in the chat room and if somebody posts a link into the chat room it, and it's not to one of our whitelisted uh, websites like Microsoft.com, ASP.net. It's blocked. Um, the the idea here, what we're trying to get to is peeling back that yeah. block. And you have access to the message before it gets posted to the stream with the API. Yes. So we might be able to see something that's not publicly coming across. Right. Or if it does get out there, hide it and, right, and mark it for moderation. Right. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Regs asks, what hat is, is Jeff wearing? Oh, my gosh. I didn't even mention it. So this is a new hat I got oh. from our friends at Xamarin this week, right? I, wait a sec. This th All right. This is a little ironic, right? Check that out. Yep. C Sharp, Cloud, Visual Studio, Code, and Phone. Yeah. The, so the, the irony of this, for like the first three, four years that I knew you, every time I saw you somewhere, you were wearing a hat with one of your business names on it. Oh, yeah. Right? Event yeah. Day or I forget the other one. Uh, and MKB or shoop.com yes. or CloudDB. CloudDB was a big one. Yes, and and here I'm the one wearing the hat on stream and you're not. Yeah. <laughs> so, th yeah, this is a new hat that, that I just got from, like I said, from our Xamarin friends here at Build. Um, they asked me to wear it on stream. So here we are. Purple, uh, purple hat, right? I don't have too many purple hats. But... All right, so speaking of movie references, you got to love this. I see dev people... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I got anyway, that. One. Where were we? Okay. Uh, so if if we find an image, we're going to send. It, I'm getting back into the code. If we're going to find an image. We're going to send it to Vision API. Okay. We're going to get back a description plus tags uh, plus uh, the size. You could we could do a ton of things here. You could do thumbnails, uh, but we, but you know we'll, we'll get to that and then. Yeah. And then we want to post back to the stream uh, the photo description. Is this is this what we're gonna do? Is this sum up the project? You know, I think we're. I think that's a pretty good set of features to start, right? We can of course extend later, and you know, for minimum viable. Okay, that's a pretty good start. All right. So now, also in text, what I do next is I start visioning how my flow of code is going to be. Oh, okay. So connect to Azure. Uh, that actually is in the wrong place, if I'm honest. That is, mm. we're, we're not going to do that here. We're going to do that here, right? Because that's right. going to be part of the, the Vision API call. Don't connect um, to Azure. Don't use some of those Vision API 
calls that I get for free unless it's a URL yeah. that looks like something I need to inspect. Right. So where are the stream of messages? Uh, so uh, you can see on the left side of my screen, I have these command objects. And the command object is triggered from inside of this class over here, FritzBot, that it has an event raised to it that says, oh, I see a message here. And now so we have that block of text we can inspect. OK, so we're going to write a, a new class. It's going to be a command, something command. And this is going to be um, uh, has image command. And this is going to this is going to look at all the messages and just determine it's going to basically be a yes or no that says, does this uh, message have a URL in it, right? Sure. So that's going to be the name of the image. Parse URL is, uh, I'm sorry, parse the message, find it if it has a URL. Mm -hmm. That actually is also in the wrong place. Let's cut that and just move it. Move it up. Up a little bit. Actually, check this out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, dude, I thought you were the Visual Studio Tips guy for a while. Uh, go back. Do a Control Z a couple times there. Put it back. All Hold right. Hold down Alt. Yep. Right? And it'll just move. Yeah. Oh. So great. Love that. And it works through live share. And it works through live share. Yes. Okay. And so, um, Fossil's Purple Hat Minnesota Vikings fan. No, I am not a Vikings fan. Uh -huh. You know that. Okay. So what's going to be inside has image? This is going to be a regular expression. Yeah. And the regular expression is going to look for, like, here I'll start doing some pseudocode. So we're going to do any sort of white space. Okay. Right? Not a word break. Any sort of white space. HTTP something and then we'll end with our variables there right dot uh, PNG uh, which would actually exclude images that have a query string so we're getting into a little weird thing mm. actually I, I'm not smart enough I'm not qualified for this let's look at Stack Overflow for uh, regex URL finder I'm sure there's something right we'll, okay we'll find that Again, we'll rely on other people's expertise. Right. There's code somewhere out there that we can reuse without having to reinvent it. Yeah. Hey, Pac-Man Jr., welcome back to the stream. Good to see you. So we'll connect to Azure. We'll send the URL that we found. We'll get back the description. And now we have to get this. Uh, are we going to store the image anywhere? Or is this all going to be in memory? We're going to dump it back to the screen and stream and be done with it. I think we just dump it back to the stream. Okay. We've got the URL. If we want to do something with it later, we can figure that out at well, that point. We can only do something with it later if you store it, which is cool not to store it. Let's not now. store it for okay. now. Right. Um, when, get back a description. How do I send something to your stream? Like the message is going to be like photo found, and then maybe we put the, um, the description. file name. Because it's going to go fast and oh. this is asynchronous. So if you have 30 messages coming in mm. and I just send back guitar, that's not helpful. So maybe we'll do the file, the, the not the full path, but the file name of the, the photo. How about we, I think we also have information about who keyed in that message. Oh, right. Okay. So now we're sending more information around. Uh, right. In, in the scope of a command. So here, let me show you the I command interface here on screen. I have the, the name of the command, the description. When it's executed, you can see here on line 17, I receive the name of the user who issued what's triggered this command, and then the full command text. So I think that's an opportunity for us to say, oh, yeah, um, you know, uh, Brendan posted this image, and it contains this description. Okay. So now let me follow you and see what you've got there. Yeah, so all I did here on line seven, which I've highlighted, is we're going to basically send your command into, oh, no, my, I'm already the command. This, is, this isn't this is going to be sent in as a parameter. I'm going to inherit from I command, so I'll just have all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I don't think we need to call it has image. Just call it image command. Or well, or it's, maybe. it's This is the checker. This is saying, does the command have an image? Um, does the does image the, finder. But at this point, I'm when sorry, it's been... I, I said command, I meant message, but that's part of this data. Right? right. So let's just call it image command because I, ha I have a method inside of FritzBot that decides which command to fire. I know, but that, that's what this is deciding. This is saying, unless you're going to send every message into image command. No, no. Um, so here, let's, let's skip forward just a little bit so you have just a little bit of context. Um, 
So here's, this is the method that's called here starting on line 130 yeah. when it receives a chat message. And we worked with, uh, with our friend Mads Torgerson on mm -hmm. this, right? He helped clean this method up a little bit. So you log the information. So I, I log it just to make sure that I don't have people, the same person, firing lots and lots of the same command That's over good. and over again. I like it. Um, and then there's um, these couple of pivot points here. So here's where I say if it ends with a question mark, then handle that as a question to go off of Azure Cognitive Services, right. and it goes and does that. Otherwise, it checks to make sure that it starts with the command prefix, which is, which is just an exclamation point. Right. And then it goes and finds uh, huh, 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 inside of a little commands registry dictionary, which one of the commands should I use right. and execute it. But I don't want... Our code has to run before this because exactly. it's going to potentially run more than one command. Like, isn't this funny? Question mark with a URL in the middle, isn't this cat picture URL funny question mark? So we want well, to run ab above this, I think. Right. So where we have this call out to say, go handle the Azure question, and then it stops, right? right? I've decided this is what's going to process it. I think we need to do something similar that says, if this message looks like an image, right. handle the image, stop. Don't right. do any further processing. Right. Uh, so above this, we need to parse the message to see if it contains a photo URL. Yep. Right. And if it does, then we'll issue then that. Then hand command. off and do the processing. So, so that, let me come back to your right. thing here so we can see. You know, so some line more logic seven here. is already before us. So in above that, we need somewhere else. We need new code inside your bot. Yep. To trigger that. To determine, or no, to find uh, image URLs. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we're gonna the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna write a unit test that uh, takes some text and finds the URL. That way we can write. That way we can test that this is working without having to say, "Hey guys, post some images and then let's see if it works." So we'll find the URLs. Uh, the the so we'll we'll do that. Uh, let's dump out to Stack Overflow and see if we can find that URL because we know we're going to need that. Um, All right, so I will run over to this. Oh, you know what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Watch this. Go back to your... You found something? Um, hey. <sighs> Look at that. All right, so th this looks like, like Sanskrit to some folks here. Yeah. But briefly looking at that, it's got a carrot to start it. Right, so that's saying the beginning. Which we actually line. don't like, so we're no. deleting that. We want to match HTTPS maybe with an S. Ma the S is optional. Optional. We're right. going to have a full protocol here. Right, so the, the question mark says the S zero or one times. That's right. Match it. Okay. Yep. And then here's the protocol mm -hmm. switcher. And then any words or white space, we don't care what they are. But this is matching the, the full URL. So anyway, we is don't it, have to parse this yet. This is just the pseudocode. We'll do that in the unit test. Sure. OK. Right. Uh, do you have the unit test runner something set up? We can say new uh, unit test and find URLs. I have. Uh, I actually have live unit testing that we can kick off and have running in the background. OK, perfect. Um, so let's go back to vision readme text. So we're going to parse the image to find the URL. If we find the URL, then we're going to call this new. This is no longer a, a bool now. This will just probably be void. Oh, uh, it'll be a class. Um, yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah, it'll be an image command. And then we'll probably call execute. You, 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 yes, you, it's you execute it? that we pass in. You know, here's, here's what was sent to us. Go process it and do whatever you do. Right. Um, Eldorian, best of, uh, safe travels to you, leaving from Build, heading home to Kansas City. And Bad Ombre says, I like big bots. I cannot lie. <laughs> hey, well Sir mix -a -Lot is from Seattle, right? Is he? Yes. Okay. I learned something new today. Yeah, that's all the references of the music of um, uh, the hamburger place. Dix, oh. Dix is the place where the cool. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so well, well played. Okay, and then we send the image, and then how are we going to get the description back to the stream? So here's here's what's what we can do. If you look at the command, the command is issued a copy of the chat service. Ah, chat service send. Exactly. 
Okay. And we can post that message right back out to the uh, to the screen. So uh, if I'm reading all of this correctly, there's really only two things, right? If I draw a line here, everything above this is step one. Mm -hmm. Do we have an image? Mm -hmm. And then everything below that is find the image. Oh, we have to add, and, and we'll do this with uh, some unit tests. So I've, I've kind of munged together two things there. But that's all we're doing. If they have an image, then go to Azure and get it and throw the description back. Easy. Easy peasy. Bots of AI and smart. Yes, very smart. <clears throat> all right. I so need that coffee uh, today, let me tell you. Ooh, did not sleep well. <laughs> So here, here's what I think the best way to run with our unit test is. Okay. Let's look at your logs. Without a doubt, somebody somewhere has already uploaded a photo in the past history. Well, right? so they, they don't upload photos, right? It, this is going to be looking I at mean the, chat. the URL. Right? right. But let's go find that log. Then we'll have the exact syntax that Twitch is going to give us. I don't have logs. Oh, you don't have, I thought something was logged. Oh, that's so only it, it for logs them. it to the console. Oh, so I, I can see. see those messages. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, let's do this then. Let's fire up the the. Let's let it run and watch the console and see the URL come across. Because I want to see if Twitch is doing anything like Twitter does with the substitution of the text, like a Tico link, or what are we actually going to so get? So it, it actually it doesn't do that. It, it um, I'm connected. So here we go. A little bit of background. So our chatbot uses a TCP client to actually connect to an IRC server, mm -hmm. and it gets all the raw data coming across. So we're just going to get the text. We're just going to so get unit test. whatever text. So here we go. So um, no, that's not. So the, the bot actually tried to answer a question from uh, FDE. Is that I don't know how to pronounce your name there. And then FDE Faisal. Yeah. Um, we are working on on a Twitch bot, um, and actually, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate the follow. So, so Scott, Kate, and I are working on doing a little bit more than a normal Twitch bot that you send commands into. We're actually going to inspect and try and do some smart things with what people post. Like you asked a question here, and the bot tried to answer your question automatically, and it doesn't know how to answer that question. So it's responding, I don't know how to handle that. So when folks post images, Scott has uh, this great technique he's used to reach out to the Azure Cloud Vision API and identify what's in the image. So that's what we're going to wire up to this. And uh, all right, I'm going to go find a I'm going to go find a picture, and let's see if we can uh, copy the image address. And let's just see what comes back with that. I'm going to post that in here. This, so I just found an image. This is going to be our test data. OK. So open that and see if you can. Oh, that's coming from Sites Google. Maybe that's a proxy or something. Oh, no, that's the no, Google uh, CMS thing. So open right, that. So if I click that, all right, okay. so it's another guitar. Yeah. Cool. That's okay. easy to, to say. Nice and safe and easy. So let's uh, let's use that with some text around it, and we'll ensure that the regular expression comes back with that then URL. it works okay so let's let's create a unit test so I have I have chatbot here that runs some of that stuff I have here's stuff to connect and do twitch um, let's just add a folder here and let's call this um, let's call this uh, well we're looking at calling this image command so I'll call my folder image command and I'll uh, Alt Shift C to create a new class here, and um, we want to test that it hits the Vision API, right? Or we're testing the your the regex. Yeah, all this is gonna the, our actual test will be something like um, um, ensure text has image. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see, let's. Call this message handler. Message, message test. No, no, no. You're, yeah, test. This is the test, yeah, not the handler. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's, a couple questions here. And this, this is a good question from Fossils. Does the Vision API tell whether the image is NSFW? Yes, it does. The metadata comes back, and there's two things. There's, um, I'm going to move this camera down just a tiny bit if, if, if I can. Um, 
but I'm answering the question also. There's two things, and one is called a um, a racy score, and that is going to be for things like bathing suits and the amount of skin that somebody is showing. Uh, and it's it's not even necessarily for humans, but it's it's everything. So there's an adult score, and which is going to be for things like nudity okay. and for uh, cursing, mm. for text that may be embedded like a GIF. And there's also so there's two things. I'm not an expert in that field, so I I, I don't know where the boundaries are drawn. But there is that data that you okay. can you can certainly find there. So I've created my test class. And I forget, I'm using, I'm using, uh, what am I using here? No, that's wrong class. I forget which Some test sort framework of decorator. I'm using. Yeah, is it, I'm using X unit. All right. So let's make this a public class. And um, let's also start the live unit testing, right? So I have live unit testing that will run here for us. So, so I, in order just to make sure it's working, let's uh, create a new method. Okay. So, public void uh, is true, and then inside the body of that return tr assert. So let's mark this as a test. Yeah, I just want to see if the it's running, right? Yes. Uh, why am I not getting? I want to get my using statement here. Hang on, hang on. Uh, over here. Right? I'm marking this. Oh, it's fact in X unit. That's right. And then now just can... assert is true, true. And then run it, make sure we're green. All right, so save, and you can see. There we go, Good. live unit testing. So change it to Good. false, and then it should give us red, right? Ch change true uh, to false. Yes, let's do that. I'm not even going to save the file. It's nice. running. Okay, we're good. good. So, so we'll wire it up. Now, um, take me to that file with the sharing. Bring you in. All right, so that should have. Right. Okay, good. So I just have this stuff on my clipboard. I'm going to comment these out. Right, so that's our regular expression, and that is the, uh, the sample text. So let's take that data and actually say like var pattern equals, and then we'll just bring everything in. We know that this is not our final regular expression. That dollar sign on the end, by the way, is the end of the string. We don't want yeah. that. So we'll cut this and paste that in there. We'll come back and massage this more, but that's why we're in a unit test. Right. now. It I see the red squiggles inside the string there. Yeah, we need to make that a, a string literal with the at sign. Yeah, we do have some delay on the stream. Uh, um, there's <laughs> that's just the nature of the the connection to Twitch sometimes. So, but we really appreciate the sixty some folks that are out there watching. The number up at the top says fifty six, but over here on my Twitch console, it's been fifty eight. It's been touching sixty here a little bit, but. Thank you very much, everybody that's joining us today and taking a look. All right, so I just did a again um, for for speed purposes. I'm going to copy paste some things into um, into from from Docs. So I'm at uh, docsmicrosoft.com. Copy paste, and so this is going to be pattern. And my regular options ignore case. We don't care about the the URL. I'm going to do control dot on my machine, which is going to then bring in system text regex, which is amazing to do that over live share on your machine. So you guys saw me do a control dot on fact to insert the using X unit statement there on line five. Scott just did the exact same thing from his Visual Studio and got the exact same set of refactoring capabilities from over there. That's very cool. So let's return match. Uh, count is greater than zero, which means that we 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 found something. Now th this should still be so, false. You know what? Let's let's up this. Let's change that from assert true. Well, I'm going to let right. that finish. Uh, and actually, match count isn't isn't a thing here, right? It doesn't. Right, I've got um, a red squiggle that doesn't exist. I think you want to do. 
All right, so that was that was setting uh, the match count. Oh, maybe I copied in a couple of the uh, um, captures. I'm, we might have to go through the debugger and see what the uh, M groups or the, the the match group is coming back at. Oh, right, so we can do this. Um, let's just look at M dot uh, captures dot count. Because captures is an array. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to hover over this to see I'm not getting anything. It's a capture collection. It's not quite an array, but right. I believe you're right. It does have a, a count property off of it. There we go. All right. Now, let me help you out here. You Besides making... So true, it works. Good. Yep. But we can actually change this. And I think a little bit more descriptive is uh, I believe there's a greater, right? Um or is greater, no, I don't see is greater. I thought there was. What happens if I start typing while you're in that? Now you've done it. Larger, what do they call that? I don't know, we, we can. You can do the is true for now, but I thought there was a greater than yeah. method. On the, on the oh. assert that we could use. So um, live code came in and and told me that there is something around this. Uh, this is a new feature. I don't know how it works. Okay. Well, we we can dress it up later. Yeah, let's just, absolutely. Let's just so it works, it works for now. Good. Um, so it found that there is at least one capture in there. Right. Which is cool, right? So the, the regular expression that we wrote is finding the URL, but it's finding a little bit too much of the URL. It's not actually, this is any URL, not just images, mm. right? And we want to actually look for something that is in JPEG. So I think I want to amend that. Let's go back to, so I'm just going to search regular uh, expression image URL. Again, we're we're leaning on the shoulders of giants that have already done this this problem for us. Right. Um, Philippe is asking about live uh, the live unit testing feature. Yes, this is a enterprise feature that's available uh, in the enterprise edition of Visual Studio. You can always download a Visual Studio Preview version for free and test that out, and uh, that comes with live unit testing. You can try that. Um, otherwise, you can actually configure the test explorer that I have over here on the left side to always run the unit tests after you build. So you won't get as fast a, a response on these things, but you can still get a similar, you know, write some code, save, build, and get that quick feedback from the test explorer over here. Now you've done it. So I found a different pattern, which is... Basically, it's looking for this .png or .jpg at the end, and it's coming back false. Our string is .jpg. Um, so your test is failing. This is awesome, right? Like we're not experts at regular expression, but with the live testing, we'll be Maybe able to. Maybe you're not. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna stick with we. Okay. <laughs> um, and so that is. Uh, let's see if we can figure out how to m munge these two together. Oh, so HTTPS works. Um, well, it's let's... HTTPS with a space there, right? Do you see the space? Now, give it a second. Let's see. Nope, still doesn't have it. Right. <coughs> so I think we're going to go back to pattern. Well, so this is, this is green. So okay. what we need to do is just get the ending... Uh, up into here. So I don't understand this question mark percent ampersand equals. Those are available for query string options. There's my question mark of zero to one. I think this may. Well, so that's doing a, a specific and explicit capture of the question mark colon, right? It's actually trying to find, excuse me, it's trying to, to really inspect and, and explicitly capture those values and put them into a, a, uh, a another match or a this. capture. So I think, did it run? Oh, we're waiting for line 13. It's running. I can hear the fan on my machine kicked up. <laughs> oh no. 
Let me check. So one that takes thing. a dot. That takes lots of dots. And then at the end, look at PNG or JPEG. I'll keep looking with Stack Overflow while that's building. Yeah, yeah. What is oh, that blue now we've got now we've got minus. It didn't actually run it. Ooh. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Well, there's lots of there's lots of examples on this. So let's let's continue with our experiment. Let's try this one. Oops, that's a bad copy paste, huh? All right. You change the query string into file type, Brendan is pointing out. Well, I got rid of the query, the query string. So let's look at, there's a quote there. Let's escape that. Oh, no, it's double quote. Let me make sure. Yep, we're at best performance over here. Let's you two if... don't remember regexes. Yes, I do. Haha, that oh. fan sounds like the laptop is ready to take off. Oh, wow, you guys can hear the fan? Let's see what this is. This is this is uh, our third try from stealing regex, borrowing regex from uh, Stack Overflow. So this looks this looks pretty good. PNG, JPEG, JPEG, GIF, PNG, and SVG. Maybe we don't need yeah. SVG, but let's see if we get this test passing. Let's see if it gets running. There we go. All right. Okay. Go. All right. So. We're relying on the success of the unit tests, and we're we're knowing that the the match comes back. So, you when you deleted that extra line there, right? Was that line commented out? It was. Uh, I was called it? it pattern and pattern two, so we could compare them if we needed to uh, look at what was once successful and now failing. But I think this is a good regex. I don't know if we're going to pass SVG in. I'm just going to delete that. But the rest of these look fine. PNG, JPEG, JPEG, GIF, and P. Oh, PNG's on there twice. Why do you think that, uh, that looks like a, a mistake? Looks like a simple mistake. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what, what's neat about this, we're live sharing in. You're writing code, and my machine is testing it. <laughs> I don't have any delays at all. I can't hear my fan. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so, But some feedback for the live share team might be, you know what? We see the unit test passing on my machine. It might be nice to send that information over to yours so that you get a little bit of feedback. Although, I think that unit test framework is something being done by a plugin. That's not Visual Studio. So those icons are something yes. local to your environment. Oh, no, no, no. This is live, this is, uh, live unit testing here on the side. This is, that's Visual Studio live unit testing. Okay. Right? And also the test explorer is Visual Studio. Um, you know what, Philippe is saying, maybe we could try a simpler one, just HTTP star JPEG, JPEG. Well, we found it. GIF, we have it working. PNG. So now we can now we can move on, right? There, without a doubt, there's a million ways to slice and dice sure. this cat. Sure. Uh, but now we've we've proven that we can, in fact, find a URL. So now what we have to do is is make this run off of uh, your. Or, or transplant this code essentially into your listener of messages, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so that we could say this is what a uh, what a message that we want to inspect is. Right. Which which now thinking about it, I've got a refactoring in my head that I want to do, where we now have a second command that is triggered conditionally based on some format of the text. Right. So maybe at some point I want to build into my command objects a um, is applicable method that will inspect the message text and do this so that I can generically have my bot class say, is it applicable to these commands and just fire that instead of embedding this specific logic that is really only applicable to our image command right. inside of the bot class. I don't know why my for each is not um, coming alive. Oh, maybe because of the IntelliSense is broken here. Or maybe I didn't type it right. For each. Why isn't that coming across? I'm not sure. I, the snippet you would think would come across. For each. 
Enter there or you go. tab? No, you've got it. Tab now. I know. Enter or tab? I tried I tab a minute ago. Try it. Yeah, see, it's not working. No. Hmm. Bummer. Let's try enter. Uh-uh. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, for each capture, C in M dot captures. <clears throat> uh, Brendan's pointing out that because you have HTTP with a question mark at the end of it in the pattern on line 15, ah. it's saying HTTP may occur with that question. Well, no, no, no. I think you were fine there. Go back. Yeah, I think that's right. Good call. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah, this actually <coughs> has some other fancier things that we... Uh, well... Let's let's keep going. Right. You know, let's use that for now. Um, we've been going for about an, we're almost at the two hour mark here. Oh, we are. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. We're an hour forty seven in. So yeah, my snippets are just not working at all. Console dot out, and then we'll do a c dot uh, value, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now this should. Um, well, uh, why do I have a red line there? Cannot be used. It's console dot out dot right line. All right. Thanks. Oh, and did you see that? Check that out. Hang on. Look at this. I control dot, and you see how it's got these stars next mm -hmm. to the first couple? That's what's called IntelliCode. Right. And it's telling it's telling me these are the things that folks most commonly use with this object. Now, isn't there a code sample that will actually get injected with that also? I thought the. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was more than just a popularity. I think it actually has a, a sample somehow. Well, it'll look at how you're how you're using it, right? And actually suggest contextually based on what you're doing, All right. as well. So now, where where do I see your console output with this live test? Is it just in your output? Um, so I don't tray? I don't have right I don't have output that pops up here because I'm using X unit. If I was using N unit, I would get that. Um, with X unit, I have to pass in. Um, something to do the logging for me. How about if you just right click and debug it and set a breakpoint on line 26? I just want to see the value of what's being captured. Sounds good. So I'll click up here and I'll choose debug. Right. So I'm not sure why it's discovering. It knows what the test is. I just told it this was a test. <laughs> I just want to see the value of C value. I think that's our URL. But it's not good to think. It's good to confirm. Yeah. Which I suppose we could have another unit test that does, but... So here it comes. Now, check that out. You're That's in debug amazing. mode on your machine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, unexpected error. Check the test output pane for details. Uh, I don't know why it stopped. Try it one more time. Oh, the output pane. We'll take a look. try that one more time. You know, we might not have. There we go. All right, so as I hover over C, I get the URL. So you can do that too, right? Right, so if I, well, I'm trying to hover over it and it's not popping up for me here. Let's. Or your intermediate window, you can type C.value. Yeah. Yep, so I'll just paste that in here and I do see, yeah, it's the full URL that we were testing for. Nice. And the whole this is the photo is gone, and it's all the way down through JPEG. So we're good. Parse, Parse says it's not good to think. <laughs> it's good to confirm. You can right? never second guess the computer, right? Right. Computer, is this a URL? Oh. True. Um, right. The carpenters say measure twice, cut once, right? Met, met, yeah. So I'm going to stop debugging. So yep. we've, we've confirmed that C value is our URL. Right. And so now what I'm going to do, we're, this actually is not you know a what? good unit test because we don't have code running anywhere outside the unit test. But, but we also want to You know what we could do to actually to actually codify and make sure that that's very clearly, right? Well, let me, right, if we say var URL equals and then paste that in there. Yeah. And we could say this is the photo. And let's use a little bit of string interpolation here yep. to just say. I like it. URL. URL. And then down here, I can say instead of this for Assert each of us. Assert is this, match. Yes. All right. So we've tested that the that the captures uh, assert dot equal is what they use here in. Uh, That's good. 
uh, URL, and then the actual that we, re we received was, what was it, m dot captures Of zero, zero dot value. Dot value, yeah. And then delete line 26. Actually, I guess you could keep both asserts there, it's fine. Yeah, might as well. And done, I've got, I've got greens. Yep. All right. So in order for this to be a, a unit test, it would actually be calling back a method in your code. We've actually just hijacked the testing framework to write some code that we know will then work in, a, in other places. Right. So we, we prototyped which, a little which, bit. Which is fine, right. So let's, uh, I'm going to select all of this and copy. And now go back into the... It's over here in the Fritz bot is where we're doing that pivot. All right, right? so this. follow me over there. Oh, I think on my side, I can click you, and it will and take me, me to your cursor. Yeah. Nice. So let's oh, put it in right here. Let's my, uh, say... well, my line numbers are not showing, which is interesting. Hmm. But OK, go ahead. Check for image processing. All right. And, and then now we can... I'll just paste from my clipboard, which is all of the stuff that um, that I just brought in. Oh, look at that. It, my cursor wasn't in your place. So control Z just to get back to where we were. And now uh, click to follow click you in. again. And I'll click my cursor here and paste. And now, now we brought some stuff in. So here's the pattern. So we'll keep the pattern. And we actually don't need a test URL here. No. We don't need a message here. So um, let's uh, let's rename pattern to let's call it image check pattern, right? Because we're doing a couple of other checks here. Yeah. And then this is going to be um, image check pattern. I'm going to replace your regex here with a var. I like vars. And then message here is going to be e dot message. Let me, and I'll control dot this so that I get, oops. All right, I'll control dot and pull that in. Okay. And now M is not very descriptive here. So let's say. Um, uh, uh, is image. Well, let's match your naming convention up there. Image check. Okay. Uh, and then here we can say if image check dot captures uh, is greater than zero. Right. right. Yep. Uh, oh, actually, count is right. greater than zero. Now we can call the uh, call the command object we're going to create. And now if we go back to our readme, we have uh, we have done a, a bunch of this stuff, right? So the unit test is gone. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. This is going to be C code in what's what's the name of the unit test? Um, message test. Yeah. Message test dot cs. Okay. So we've got that. Now we need to create the image command. Let's go create an image command. Actually, before we do that, inside Fritzbot, let's pretend that we know the image command is there. So uh, let's and, and let's figure out the signature here. Uh, so well, the signature signature should be almost almost the same as what we're doing currently. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. You, you, you so, know this part of the system. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me create the image command because this is something that I've kind of standardized. So let's create image command. I don't like image command. It's not. It doesn't tell me. I think it's like an image descriptor command, maybe. Okay. So let's rename it. I'll do an F two here, which will match the file name and the command. So I will call this. Uh, what was it? Image descriptor. I, I think that's better. Okay. Because that's what we're. That's what this command is doing, right? In the future, you you might have other image things. It didn't rename the file for me at the same time. That feels bad. Okay. All right, so image descriptor command. That's interesting. Now it's got. Now it's got two. That might be some live share feedback. Don't. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to delete it. That's fine. Let's keep going. It'll. I think it'll fix itself. Here we. <clears throat> okay. So I'm implementing this i command interface. Let's make this a public class. I'll control dot and implement the interface. So now I don't want to do that. Let's do. Make this a get set the, str the name of this. So the name of my command here is image descriptor. 
and I use I use this feature in other places so that I can say here's the different commands that are that are available. That's good. Um, one second here. Just iterating through uh, all the commands that you have live. Yep. All right. So let's go to the end here, and this is uh, inspect images and report to the chat room. Uh, what they can description, yeah. Using uh, uh, using Vision API. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Now execute. This is where we're actually going to go and do the thing. Okay. Now, I need access to configuration so I can get the stuff out of configuration. Okay. Um, so how how should I best pass that configuration in? Well, over here in Fritzbot. Let me scroll up here. Uh, Lancer Hyena, thank you for the follow, and thank you, and, and Zima, thank you for the follow as well, joining us here today. So I have the configuration passed into this class, and I store it off here under in the uh, underscore config local property. So I'm okay. going to want to pass that along. Um, one last thing, because I know this is here. Q&A is handled separately. Otherwise, it just builds and adds all the various commands that I have here. I want to remove, I'm going to want to also remove the, the name. Yep. So we get rid of that one as well. OK. So that's taken care of. Um, but when I actually do this one-time thing to spin up and say, okay, call the new command, I'm going to say uh, var uh, image descriptor. Let's call it just image, image desk. desk. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Equals new image descriptor command. And now I want to pass in that config so that I can grab those those keys that we just initialized ah, yeah, sure. and be able to pass them into the method that you've already got. Okay, so so I have that, and then the, really what I want to do after I have it is I want to say uh, I need to wire up the chat service. So that is um, right. It is sender as I chat service. Okay. And then um, I want to actually execute and pass in to the execute the username who actually, right, who, who sent the command, um, which is going to be e.username. You can see it there. So e username. And then the command text, right, the text that they've sent in is uh, e.message. Yep. And then I end with uh, image desk command. Uh, oh, no, I'm executing, and then I just say return, because I'm done, right? I'm going to process the image. And Except it. we don't need the image there. We don't want e-message at the end of line 163. We want the capture. We want the URL, because we already found the URL. We don't have to do it again. You're right. Okay, that's a good idea. So let's replace that then with, what was it? It was image check. It'll be image check. Dot captures. Captures, and then the, the zero. first. That dot value. Yeah. So we have that string that we pass in. Yeah. Now I'm getting a green squiggle here, I believe, because execute is it's an async task method. So let's put an await in front of that. And we're good. And we don't have a constructor on the other side that takes config. No problem. I'll control dot and generate that. Oh, and I'm looking at that file on my machine and it just updates. It just appeared. You, you can't see it on your screen, but I Oh, live share is amazing. <laughs> I'll just F12 to go to the definition right. and check it out. Oh, now you can see my cursor. And I can see where you are here with the little tape flag. Yeah. And you see it stores the config in this underscore config location yeah. up here. All right, Beautiful. so I've got a private variable. Now, you've already got the text to do the inspection and work with the Azure service from, from some of that other code that you wrote out on, uh, uh, out on GitHub. So look at you actually defining parameters and writing. Well, that way you'll know what's happening later. Oh, because it's a little bit different. It's not actually the full command text. We're, in this case, only looking at the URL. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the URL for the image, the username. What I you're going to do, so let's, 
just to pseudocode this. Yeah. Um, Not even pseudocode. So just do var description equals one two three as a string, all right. and then return one two three back as the string to the stream. Okay. So I would say uh, chat service dot uh, send message async. And I'm going to want to await that. Yep. Right. Go to the end of the line here, and the message that I want to send back. All right, so let's do even some fancier things. Let's say um, on line 30, string interpolation. Let's format this with uh, username. All right, so username. And then one thing we don't have from the full command text yet is the, the file name. Uh, and so I, I'm not actually sure. It wouldn't necessarily make sense to parse the URL because that's coming from Twitter no, or something no. else. So let's just say username, photo, colon, description. Okay. Right? Maybe capital P will look a little prettier. And then, um, and then the message and we send, send back description. is description. So and now we just need to dress getting, up line 30. So I need to put an async on this. Good. Uh, I'm now sorry. we just need to dress up line 30 to mm -hmm. go call the Azure Vision API service. Okay. Perfect. So we need to get those keys. We'll go back to, we don't have to type this though. We can steal it from GitHub repo already. So go back to GitHub and then copy this. Let's see, lines 59 all the way, just 59 through 71. Copy it all now and then we'll delete what we don't need on the other side. Is that good? Sure. All right, so then, so we're creating a new HTTP client. Mm, I don't, let's come back to that because we now have HTTP client factory in ASP.NET. We should be able to clean that up. Okay. So that we're not actually, right, so that our HTTP client is managed for us. That's okay. I mean, we can do that here, but let's let's clean that up. I mean, at the end of the day now, we're, we're making a public REST call. Right. So the, uh, where is it, Fritzbot right down here right is go all the way up to the control i for http if you already have it you'll find it well let's take a look i'm not sure yeah we don't have it here um well, let, let's get it working and we can make it better i think enough. you just need to bring in the namespace oh yeah absolutely so using yep. statement now instead of using get environment variable this we can say underscore config, yep. and I can reach for that specific key and put it here. So let me go over to app settings, so I can get that exact Variable location. Variable name, vision API, so, base URL. But it's under Fritzbot. Oh, right. So in order to do Fritzbot the traversing, colon. yeah. So Fritzbot colon that. How are we on comments? Uh, remember, kids, document your public APIs right away. <laughs> Good tip. Yes. All right, so vision API base URL, but it is Fritzbot ahead of that. I'm a little vain. I name my, my projects good. after myself. Um, people are saying our regex might not be bulletproof, which we already know. Like yeah. It's it's not. Uh, we'll figure that out. So, so we may have to dress that up. We're just trying to get it working right now. Can... Oh, wait a sec, wait a sec. I put the URL there. It's not the URL. It needs to be the... Um, the, the keys. The keys. The, the URL is supposed to be here. So let's yeah. put config. And then it's... Uh, come here, Jeff. That with Fritzbot in front of that. And I've got an extra... Square brackets. So. Yeah. Okay. This isn't vision base URL, it is Asterix Sennaf. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. I look forward to seeing your comments in the chat room. All right, so let's replace it. So now I'm pulling the API key that I have saved in my yep. secrets location. So my URI here, let's change this into a var. Good. Var body equals, and then here's media, media URL. That's what you were using. Full command text. Right, which is the, and we know because we documented it. <laughs> All yep. right, so now we have that, good. We're encoding to get back some JSON. Now good. what you don't have is the vision description class. So that's why you're getting 
uh, uh, line 43. So you probably already have Newton's off, so you can bring in JSON convert the namespace. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. We'll solve one thing at a time. All right. Now it's trying to deserialize of T, and you don't have T, which is vision description. Now this is pretty cool, and I did a little bit of work. Uh, Visual Studio has this feature. Everyone on the stream has probably used it. Paste JSON as class. Yes. Is that's nice. So yes. let's go back to GitHub and let's steal vision description. And I don't know where you want to put that in your... So um, uh, I don't see... Is it in models? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Media vision description. There it is. Yeah. So I'll just navigate right to it. And, and this may have some uh, Twitter stuff in it. So let's confirm that it's isolated. Oh, keep going down. Media metadata categories no. detail. Okay, good. So I, I think this is a, really just a um, yeah. Go to raw. Perfect. You got yeah, that. And do a control A. All right. So outside of commands, this is really kind of a helper class. So no, it's a model. Okay. All right. So let's add a folder for Would, models. Do you already have models somewhere? Not inside this class library. Okay. Right. So now I'll add a class, and this was a uh, vision description. Vision. Description. Move that modal up an inch, and you'll see we can confirm that. Up, 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 up. Yeah, vision description. There we go. All right. And I will just paste that in, but let's make sure it uses not your namespace, but now my namespace of Fritz, chat, bot. Uh, yeah, models. Yep. Good. Good. Save, close, go back to the other side, and control dot should bring that in for you, right? Uh, yeah. Models. Okay, so now... We don't want to return it. Right. So set that as the result. Uh-huh. Well, and... we already have a result up here. All right. Uh, let's call this... Uh, let's just call this vision description. That's good. I like that. And then line 47, change 1, 2, 3 to curly brackets, vision description, dot description. Now, something that's interesting here, a little bit of human nature. Mm -hmm. Because I did the vision API bot, the first thing people try to do is break it, which is weird. Like, they send super abstract pictures of... Like a Picasso that's abstract. No, no, no. Like, they'll send a picture of nothingness. Oh, like just solid white screen? Or like a mangled flower. Uh. Like in, in Vision API basically has a model. It knows like, I don't know, X thousand objects. Like if you send a flower or a guitar, as that was our test case, it knows what that is. Okay. But if you send like a, a, a puppet that's upside down, hidden half by a coffee cup, you know, they, they try to confuse it, which is sure. legit. Like you're a developer, you want to say, hey, what's it going to think that this is? Sure. So the reason I'm talking about that is one of the things that you get, pull up IntelliSense off a of vision description, uh, right before dot description, just do dot and see what the IntelliSense is there. See how you have a, um, we'll we can uh, actually go into that object. Yeah, let's go into the object. There's a um, uh, confidence. That's what I was looking for, the term, on line 23. The confidence is a decimal from 0 to 100. Mm. That's why in my tweet this morning, you saw the confidence of the guitar was 94.56 confidence. So in my description, I basically do an if check, and I say if the confidence is under whatever we want to make up, 40, then I put back the description of like, uh, this may be a guitar, uh, but if it's over 80, then I just do the description because we're pretty confident or 90 or whatever we sure. set, set if the there, variables. If, if, if we really are, are confident that we know what this is. Or maybe we just display the confidence number because what you don't want to do is say, here's a photo and then say, that's a flower. And people are like, that's not a flower. But okay. if you say the confidence is 4%, it's a flower, then they're like, oh, I didn't really know what that was. So let's put let's put that percentage here. Put it right there after photo. So photo yeah. so and then photo, confidence oh, oh, oh. before the description. Yeah. Confidence. So, uh, uh, like this. Vision description dot. Confidence. Uh, well, it was under, I think it was under, 
Right. Confidence is or part caption. of the caption. And caption is referenced from – where does caption come in? From the description. description. It's off the description. And it's weird that it's an array. I've never seen it have more than one. Okay. But I think if you pass in more than one language, it might come back with captions from English and Spanish and Japanese. Mm. I, I haven't done that, but that's my, my So guess. I don't want to just say dot description here. I want to say dot captions zero, zero dot text. So I get that text. Yeah. Good, good, good call. I'm okay. probably doing that on the other side too. In fact, just for fun, go back over to my GitHub repo. And um, let's look at the file structure. It's going to be under tweets, uh, tweet scanned, uh, vision scanned.cs. <coughs> Excuse me. And then scroll down. Yeah, here. So on lines 29 is where I start looking at the confidence under 20%. Uh, and here we can actually see it as a decimal from 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. But that's where I'm two stringing. See the at the end of line uh, 40? Look at that. I'm, so as a percentage with two. Yeah, so 0 colon P2. So let's copy that. So we so that's a little bit of um, .NET formatting that it's using. Yeah. There. So here I am at that same confidence yeah. property. Perfect. All right. Now I think... This is going to work the very first time we run it. I think you're right. Now, let, just want to take a quick uh, quick look at the chat room. Mr. Demon Wolf says Azure very much approved. I agree. Ah. Azure's very cool. Scott uh, Addy is talking to us about the uh, HTTP fundamental request thing that you can do under .NET 2 Core. Right. Philippe Cruz uh, was hinting at that. We, I should use one HTTP client instance and let... Let ASP.NET Core manage that. And, right. and you're absolutely right, Philippe. We'll refactor and get that working maybe a little bit later, maybe off stream. But you're, you're absolutely right. Let's let ASP.NET manage the life the lifetime of that, uh, of that object. So it, Space Shot says people try to trick the Vision API by sending in nothingness, like a picture of the Philadelphia Flyers offense. You're killing me here, Chris. You're you killing have, me. You have... Uh... Some animosity in this stream. It's it's sports animosity towards is that, Philadelphia. Is that baseball or football? That's hockey. Oh, hockey. Philadelphia Flyers. Now I'm wearing, of course, my my Super Bowl champion shirt today <laughs> for Not, my Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. So um, I took a screenshot of the stream and got it answers like this: a screenshot of a computer. Yeah, that's okay. pretty good. Yeah. Um, oh, and so age twenty gender male and age twenty seven gender male. Thank you very much. Hey. All right. Easy. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. All right. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to test this for people on the stream, uh, you can use Twitter. If you at mention vision underscore API, you'll get back some results. Now, theoretically, you could A-B test this by grabbing a URL somewhere online, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. posting that to Twitter and at mentioning vision underscore API, where you'll see the same thing happen. Okay. Uh, and post then that URL into your stream, right. process it again under a different account, you should get the identical message. Sure. So how do you deploy this? How do we actually get it listening to the stream? All I have to do is F5. Okay, but let's ask the audience and we'll watch back in comments. What's your confidence that we've done everything right? Is it going to work the first time? Or do, is there any glaring errors that you've seen? I, us? Come on now, you know, you know they're they're just. <laughs> you know they hey, have confidence. This is called an applause. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get this right the first time, right? And if it is, I'm out. You're done. <laughs> going home. Going on break. We're. We're going to drop the mic and we're going to leave. What? How are we on time? Uh, we're, oh, we're almost two hours. We're, we're just over two hours. Two hours, 15. All right. So maybe we'll come back and do moderation or, or oh, something yeah. else in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, the, before we before we end today, I want to take a look at, you were saying there was raciness and a couple other things that we oh, could yeah. ask in the visual features. I want to dial that in. You know, maybe we don't output it just yet, but let's talk about how to get that and then we'll... Okay. So let's go back and look at the vision description... Uh, class. Oh, and I'll, my first answer is I have no idea. Okay. Because I didn't do that. I'm trusting with, with the way I built this, I'm trusting that Twitter 
uh, is going to, you know, it's kind of self-moderation. You're not probably going to upload a nudity photo on your own Twitter feed. I hope so. So you have no really going to do an- that. anonymous. And also, I'm not, my vision bot is never posting images. It's only replying to images there. So even if somebody did a nudie photo, it's okay with me because I'm just replying to describe what that and is. And saying, yeah, that's right. not but you something. Have a, you have a little bit different scenario. Right. I, so you built this from interpreting the JSON, and mm-hmm. you weren't asking for that feature. I'm willing to bet that you weren't getting that data coming back. Maybe because I didn't. Because ask the for feature it. wasn't requested. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see what's in the description under confidence and category. Right. So. Right, the caption right now just says text and confidence. Tags is a string array, but let's keep going down. So category score, what's in detail? Detail, oh, detail oh. is landmarks. Right. Well, let's go look at um, the documentation. Okay, so let's take a quick peek over at... Just Google search for Azure Vision API um, adult... Uh, what was it? Racy, I think. Yeah, race is a term that I've heard the AIML people say. Okay. But I don't know what that comes back as a class, but... Here we are. Custom uh, Computer Vision API. Right. Detect faces. Distinguish handwritten. Here we go. Flag adult content. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we... This is cool. (coughs) When you get flagged adult content, you can decide to throw it away... Or there's a blur vision that will take the bounding box of the nudity and blur it. So you don't actually <laughs> lose the photo. You can repost the photo. Okay. Blurred. You can also do it with um, uh, trademarks and logos. Mm. So you can blur things out. And, and that's the image that we get back? Yeah. We can look at that? And okay. if you really dive it deep into this, you can do that live to a video feed. So if by chance your video feed had like a Microsoft logo in the background, but you didn't have permission to do that, you could, you could blur, blur it. it out. Oh, cool. Through the, uh, I mean, we're just getting started on Vision API with the with the uh, textual description. There's a, I mean, you could get you could build your whole career understanding this. <coughs> yeah. So it doesn't tell me what parameter I need to pass in there. I think I need to well, look at a reference. A, but I mean, keep keep looking. You, ha- you got to keep going. No, I don't, I don't see... Right? I don't see commands here. This is more of a feature description Let's here. Let's see. Don't, don't give up just yet. I think we may be passing it. Sorry to touch your screen. <clears throat> that may be... You're touching my screen. As long as the extension is in lowercase, it might work. Oh, that's a good point. The what? We, well, we're... I oh, think no. we said ignore case. I said ignore our... case on the right. Yeah, ratings. so we're okay there, Smab. Among the various visual categories, the adult and racy group. Okay. So maybe we are getting it back because we have caption groups. But but you I... which enables detection mm. of adult material and restrict <coughs> flagging adult content. I think yeah, I think we need to actually request that it performs that analysis. Filter for adult and racy content detection can be set on a sliding scale to accommodate the user's preference. So that's going to be a zero to one also yeah. where where you can get, like, um, for example, <coughs> if you, if you were to take me. a picture of people jumping off a boat, they would be in their bathing suit, and that may be considered offensive in some regions of mm. the world. Okay. Uh, and so you can set your sliding scale of what you want. So, okay, so I, let's look I at give the... in, and you're right, let's look at the, the API docs of Cognitive Services. And here we go, visual features. There we go. So, right, there is, right, I can, so this was, you, we saw in your API that you were building, we were asking for description and color faces. and tags, faces. And adult. So adult, I think, is the one that, that we want to add on here. So let's go back to um, go back the to code, code. Yeah, yeah. and look at where I add the query string uh, property. So that's where I'm asking description, color, just add adult there. Yeah. Now, one thing that's going to, it won't break because a deserializer will still work, but we want to look at the value of result on line 43 as it's running, mm-hmm. capture the JSON, and then we'll repaste that JSON as class because then it will have the adult properties in it, which we don't have yet. 
uh, and then we'll be able to to analyze them. So it's a little chicken and egg thing right now. Right. So uh, just to answer a Strix uh, question there in the chat room. So what we're doing is we're going to allow folks to post images into the chat room here on Twitch, and we're going to inspect it, and we'll be able to make decisions as far as moderation to regarding what exactly that person is linking to. So this is going to use the Azure uh, Cognitive Services Vision API to inspect, you know, an image link that someone might post and tell us whether whether it has adult content, whether mm -hmm. it's safe for work, and also give a short description with a little bit of confidence information, you know, how well it knows and thinks it is what it is, back into the chat room. All right. So here's a question for you. Forget about the streaming chat and deployment for just a moment. Let's write another unit test that spins up a new I command, mm -hmm. sends in your configuration, okay, and then calls this method with our guitar image, and which we already have the URL for. That's already in the unit test. Then with the adult flag on, we'll get back the JSON there in a controlled environment, and then we can fix this class and then do an adult check. Uh, and then maybe our description... Actually, you're never posting back the image, and no. we're not deciding whether or not the image is a, is allowed yet. Maybe this maybe this returns task of bool that will then allow you to kill the rest of the command processing. So, um, so it it already stops processing back in our bot. Right? Not yet. You're not returning. You're continuing oh, no, no. there. No, I'm not. Right down here inside of the image check. Right after the execute happens, it stops. All oh, right, but you don't have to have a return on line 164. You could just continue doing more stuff. Sure. Because if somebody includes an image URL as part of their question. That's okay. You can, you know, there's the, I ignore the rest of this. So one. your business decision is if any message comes in with the photo URL, that's all you're going to do is analyze that and be done. Okay. okay. Yeah, all think, right, that's good then. Um, Smab asks a good question. At which point will. Nightbot interfere. So Nightbot is a public bot that you can use that is currently right now very aggressively moderating the chat room. And any URL that it sees, mm. it, it blocks and, and it throws out if it's not coming from a moderator or from the channel broadcaster, oh. from me. So that means that people actually are not going to see the URL. Maybe we should, if it, if it comes back without adult or racy, whatever we decide that score is, Maybe your bot should post the image back to say, Scott posted this photo, description of a guitar. Right. And and right, the goal is to shut Nightbot off completely and use this instead. Well, I don't know that, that I don't know the details, but it seems like this is not a safe enough check for that. Nightbot's gonna do curse words and textual and all the other stuff. So. In, in moderating and, and exploring the text, yes, right? And we'll get there, the, right? The goal is I'm going to turn off the URL posting in right. Nightbot and just let this I think. start to handle that URL posting. So okay. people can post links and if it goes to an image, here's what it is. Well, let's see if this works. So oh, let's right. before we deploy it though, let's write a unit test. And... So here's the problem with the unit tests. We had to, we have to use the Azure API key then in our unit test so that it knows how to connect okay. to Azure, which means I need to somehow put that API key into my right into my unit test. But you have uh, config that you're passing into your command, so we'll mm -hmm. have to bring iconfig in. Is your your unit test as part of this project or is it no, freestanding on its own? Yeah, okay. it's a different project. Okay, well. That's that's a different setup then. Let's uh, set up. So breakpoint well, actually, you you make a very good uh, very good point there. Is that I could have not just i configuration config up here, but I could have another signature here, right? That says string Azure URL string. Uh, what is it? The uh, Azure API key, right? And if I put those into properties. Right, the Azure URL equals Azure URL, and Azure API key equals Azure, come on now, Azure API key. Right, let's create those properties. Uh, it's a read-only field, uh, read-only field, 
but I can do the same thing. Instead of actually going and grabbing those values here, I can replace that with Azure API key. Azure API key equals, right? And just do that little refactoring real quick here. Uh, where was it? There, that one. And replace this with Azure URL. Mm -hmm. And then Azure URL equals. So now for test purposes, use this so that I could pass in that URL and API key and test directly. And you're saying that you would, how are you going to get eye configuration in your unit test? Or do you already have that? So don't pass it in. Use this constructor here on line 26 in my unit test. Because oh, because then the method's not using config for anything. Exactly. Okay. Which, right, actually leads to, right, I don't need that. Just make that call into base. Call into, there we go. Not even base. Oh, that, that that's fine. Yeah. Right. I, I was thinking you could call the other constructor with the base of string string, but this this is also fine. You've just overloaded oh, the constructor. Oh, I, I see what you're saying, right? I could do... I think this is actually easier to read code. So even though something yeah. else is possible, I like this This is better. more explicit. Yeah. Okay. Um, Intelligent URL blocking president not sure says, yeah, that's yeah, kind right. of the goal here. Yeah. Absolutely. So now let's go over to the test harness to the test class down here. Now, I don't want to put my API key into code that I'm going to share on GitHub. But this, uh, so can you access your iConfig from here? I cannot. It doesn't know how to load up user secrets from here. Hmm. Right. So, chain your constructors, uh, my, my stress DH says. Yes, yeah, and, and that's, that's what, what Scott was saying. About. Yeah, we could chain them, and that's that's a neat technique, but it's not as explicit, you know? Okay. It's a good idea. Well, in the sure. interest of time, which may not be in the interest of the best possible project, let's undo the constructor and just run it and set a breakpoint and see what we get in the JSON, and we'll just... We'll, so we're okay here. You, that's you fine. Can keep that, that works. if you like. It just, there's no use for it. It's five extra lines of code that That's are, okay for now. Are, okay, it's your project. So as long as you know that That's those okay. are throw away. Um, All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Oh, live share. But you don't have to. You don't have to stop because we're not going to see credentials. We can. Oh, we no, can no. run and debug it. I'm, I'm going to stop the currently running bot, and then start this one debugging, so that we can watch it, and we'll let some of our friends in the chat room post images, and we'll watch it process. And that's having to do something somewhere else. So my my running my production bot is in this screen here. I see. Folks can't see this, but I have a okay. screen here. So I'm going to stop this one. Which is just it's an ASP.NET application running in a Docker container. So my my widgets at the top of the screen are going to stop updating. So don't post image URLs yet. Give us just a second to get this debugger started. So let's come down here. And I'm actually going to instead of everyone posting URLs, we'll just say don't post any images yet for the time being. Um, but I'll just call on whoever the last person is. My stress dh. Uh, chain your constructors as well. Do me well, a favor. When we're ready, not this very second, uh, but we'll ask you to post an image URL of something like a guitar or a flower or a car or something that's, of course, safe. We're trusting you as our uh, image poster. So did we even com compile? No. But, well, it compiled, but I don't have uh, a parameterless constructor there. You don't, just... you don't need the block. Just close here. Like that. Really? No, you can't. Oh, yeah, you need an empty body. Okay, my, my mistake. There we go. Do you need us to post links? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> not not to adult content, no. Um, 
All right, so now it's starting. Now this is the website that hosts all my other little widgets. So I can still see my viewer count over here. That's okay. cool. Here's, we'll be able to see the log of the folks. So go into. Let's, let's make this a little bigger for a second here so that folks can see that. Nice. All right. So let's get a breakpoint set in Visual Studio. And we're going to ask everybody to not chat for just a second, but very specifically, um, how do we say, my stress DH. No. When we have a breakpoint here, and let's just see where you're at. Oh, you know, you're in the execute. Let's go back to your, your bot. Let's make sure the regex is working also. Oh, okay, okay. Set a breakpoint. It was in the, not in register commands, but it was down in the message handling. Come on. Here. So check for image processing. Uh, right, so I would set a break, let's set a breakpoint on 157. Do control KD and format. Oh, you know what, let me do that on my side. I don't think you can while we have the debugger attached. I can't? Okay. No. All right. Uh, okay. Well, you know, I can actually trigger a message from over here, right, that has an image. Right? Oh, okay. Oh, I suppose I could too. I'm on my iPad. Right. And, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, if I go and find just in, uh, look. Uh, you ha oh, here there's an image here. You, okay, you do what you're doing over there. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try this. I'm going to put that on your clipboard. And yeah, then, I have no way to get it over here. But you do you have the you can send your own messages to the chat, can't you? Just on sure. Using if I Chrome. go here and go, oh, oh, where am I? All right. It doesn't. Are you still debugging? Are you blue or orange? It looks like your debugger it, stopped. It broke. Try that again. Try that again. I like that trick, by the way, how Visual Studio turns orange when it's debugging. Yeah. It's very in your face like we just saw. Okay, now for some reason it crashed. Oh, that was my control C to copy. <laughs> copy, paste? Yeah, right? No, control C is fine. That wasn't it. Uh, okay, maybe. I don't know. Brainstorming. Okay, so, so something happened and it and it crashed. All right, how about I, I can post it on my side. I have it over here. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at my log here and figure out why did it crash. Hmm. Hmm. Why is it? It's not even processing an image. Oh wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Um. I always wondered why that turned orange. Yeah, makes it a little bit clearer what's happening. Um, I'm wondering. Let me go back to this. I'm gonna look at my user secrets real quick. Come on. And I want to make sure that it's not trying to connect to Mixer. And that's what I'm afraid is going on here. And it is not right now trying to go to Mixer. So let's go back to our code. Uh, app settings. Stream services. I'm going to, I'm going to remove that. I have a feeling uh, X, save. Let's try this one more time. All right, now I have like, oh no, it's just the one browser, good. There we go, match on the message. It does not help make it clearer. Okay, that's All right, fine. So we got that. So That's we're getting messages, so get rid of that breakpoint, and we'll go to the next one. Hello, world. I've got your hello, world. Okay. And now here comes the... 
So I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to add a watch for that real quick. Uh, where is it? Watches. I don't see watches. I thought there was. You can right click and then uh, I just copy and add it down manually for watches. It used to be our quick watch was like Command Shift Q. No. All right, let's just copy that. You know what? I'm not at a breakpoint. That's right. why. So, okay, here comes the message. Go ahead. Uh, take your breakpoint off of 157, so we don't actually care about that anymore. And here it comes. All right. So now... Now you can add your watch. I'll right click. Add watch. There it is. Hello, Vision API. Terrific. All right, so now we're going to kick that off. No, no, not continue. F10. Let's walk through and make sure that we're getting the value. F10. And the value is yep, the so URL, so F11. that looks good. Good. Now let's walk through this. Because remember, our goal is to get result. I guess you can F5. I like to step through stuff because if so it let's breaks. F5. Then we... Whoa. All right. So it, it got a response 200 right. OK. So look far, at, so good. Look at content, which is our URL body, right? That's good. Yep, you can see that there. So there's some JSON in there. Yep. Okay, so now F10. Deserialize it. So now I have a vision description object that has a description that says... But this is actually false right now because it doesn't have the adult stuff. So it's close-up of a guitar. So we have found success with that, but we don't yes. have the adult stuff. You have to cop, uh, uh, hover over oh, um, oh, so API our re response. Well, the re that's just a response. We need to get the string, right? All right, so let's look at that in the JSON visualizer. So there's, well, that's the text one, but it's the same deal. I'm just going to copy that out. Okay. And But if you open the JSON visualize, so it's good to keep that on your clipboard, but open JSON and let's snoop through it and see what we get. Oh, okay. So I'll mouse over that. I'm going to pull this down and choose JSON. Right. So and now that's Oh, there's nice. adult. So open adult. We'll is, say, it, is adult content false? Is racy content false? And there you get your scores. Okay. And that that's a that's a percentage, and it says zero point five percent adult, zero point six percent racy. Right. People think guitars are racy. Well, so remember the the Vision API is looking for, and also understand the difference between adult and racy. Mm. It, it's my understanding, which is not factual, but it's my understanding that adult is very specifically looking at uh, curse words in a lot of languages, not just in English. Yes. Uh, curse words and nudity. And then racy is also textual and OCR uh, with things that are, are not nudity, but things that could be considered offensive. Somebody was saying earlier things like gore. Yeah. Right? Yes. But, so, Blood, yeah. Uh, maim, a car accident. Like there's mm. going to be different things that trigger that. And I don't know what those triggers are, but. That's awesome to go to the next level. Okay, so you so have this stuff on your clipboard. What's nice description? description of Scott Kate photo, 89%, close-up of a guitar. Windows zoom into that so people can see. Yeah, perfect. And now, when you post that, I should see it back. F5 run, let it rip. And there it is. The bot wrote it back. Ship it. Ta-da! Okay, so two hours to talk about four lines of code. No. Oh, wait. No, here. Somebody wrote, try this one. Well, here. Let's let that one go. So we've got a result. Right? Control, shift F, uh, control shift F9. Delete all breakpoints. Control shift F9 and go. Photo. 40% a lamp that is sitting on a table. Now, what we don't have is the photo. So I, I think now... So let's do this as a next step. Close the debugger, let it go. We'll let that keep working. Let's go paste the JSON to get new classes. Then we'll check the is adult content. And if that comes back false. Okay. And may, and maybe a racy score of less than 20%. I don't know. Greater than, right? Well, I'm saying is adult false and racy oh, less oh. than 20%. Then we'll post the URL back. Sure. So I'm going to come over to vision description here, and we're actually going to replace this. Yeah, control, all, delete. 
Sure. And, and then I should be able to go edit right paste. Click. There's like paste special. Yeah, I think it's under edit menu. Uh, paste. I don't Down to. Paste special. Check that out. JSON as classes. Yeah. This is like a hidden feature that's been available since Visual Studio 2015. Since Visual Studio forever. And it just generates what it looks like. Now, what this is There's, not doing is putting it in the namespace. So let's do this. Let's do some fancy cut paste. Control Alt Cut. Control right. Z. Control Z. 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 Now go back up to the top, and put your cursor right there, and just highlight all that yep. junk, and paste. paste. Now we can go check the adult score. Oh yeah, because we will have that information in a class for us. Right. So let's save that. Hang on. Whoa, whoa. Uh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, root object needs to be whatever the file name is. Vision, Vision descriptor. Description. Right up top there. Okay. Now, now our command here. That's good. So now you can do an if check on line 61 and check for adult. If vision description dot adult dot is adult is adult content. Then we want not, to write back. You want to put a not in there. Uh, well, you no, no. If it not. is, let's let's say uh, await chat service. Oh, okay. Right. Send message async. Hey, and then your name. Yeah, yeah. We don't like adult content here. Okay. Return. Perfect. And now we'll do a, a racy content underneath that. So co just copy 62 to 65 and then replace. I'm a big fan of copy paste. Oh, I don't blame you. Is racy content, hey. Now that. Um, that's too racy for oh, our that's good. chat room. Let, let's let Vision API decide. Let him figure it if out. If it's racy. Let, let the service figure it out. What I don't know is what triggers true or false on that based on the percentage that comes back. Because it's not zero. We saw 0.05 on the guitar. Right. Uh, I mean, it's less than 1%, but it's not zero. So they've figured so, that out, though. That let's so, trust that they're making good choices for us. Right. If we were in a chat room that we allowed, we allowed some racy content. We could, instead of saying is racy, we could say inspect that and say, you know what? Let it be racy up to 90%. Or 10% no. or 20% yeah. or whatever. And we could even look that, like I mentioned, people jumping off a boat or swimming in a waterfall or something. And we could decide what those levels were based on what they come back. So but let's, let's just let's, check their binary. <clears throat> let's start that up and uh, let it interact with the chat room real quick. I'm going to find, let me see, I'm going to go over here and see if I can get... Uh, an image from from. Oh, I was actually. Oh, doing you have that another too. image. I don't have an image, but I'm just going to search for swimming images, and then we'll find an image that we think because the image is not actually getting posted anyway. No. But let's find something that we think, based on my understanding of racy. Um, so, oh, Olympic swimming, right? So this is this is an Olympic swimmer that is got a lot of. There you go. Um, there. So oh, it's, the diving into the pool. Right. So here's um, a vi you know very valid and safe image, but should give us a racy score. Right. In in our culture, yeah. Valid and safe. Right. right. To to be clear, you know. Yep. Um, oh, and if it's if it is safe, do you want to send back the URL? Oh, here we go. Look, uh, Chris posted one up here, um, and copy. Uh, open image in new tab. Let's see if I'm actually getting the the solo image, which I am. Photo ninety five point three percent. Risk Rick Astley. Somebody was trying to Rick roll us with that last picture. Oh wait, the description comes back. So the the Vision API knows some pretty famous people. It knows Obama. It knows uh, Taylor Swift. It knows Rick Astley. Rick Astley. He was trying yeah. to Rick roll us. Look at that. Um, Way to go, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> It'll actually say like photo of. Uh, oh, here's a good one. So he's paste posting a Bitly link. So he's shortened it. Right. And we're not. So you could unfurl the links and figure out if the link is. But right now, our regular expression won't catch that. It won't. But you know what? For a first cut, that's pretty good.
Yeah. But all right, so you have this picture of it's it, it's the it, it's Olympic the swimmers of, diving into the pool. Yeah, it's the start of a race. And uh-huh. let's come back here and I'll just say swimming and I'll paste the image. Oh, the image doesn't have a suffix on it, so it's not going to come. Look, stop posting links. It doesn't right, see so... it as a JPEG. All right, well, that's not a good example. They have a, got a handler that's that's posting the images. Let me find let another. Me, and let me make sure that you have access to post images right now, like Chris does. Oh, I did. The guitar worked. Because um, it was go- coming off of Google. It That's whitelisted. Mm, okay. Um, you are just Scott Kate, so I'm going to grant you mod access. Scott Kate is banned. What? Stop. Open image in a new tab. Let's see if this ha- Okay, here's a JPEG. Let's try this again. Am I really banned? No, I just said hello world. And that's coming through the chat. Yep, you're in. Hang okay. on. One second before you do anything. There you go. Now you have moderator access. You should be able to. All right. I'm posting the swimming link. This is a synchronized swimmers. Okay. And let's see if we, well, it comes back. A group of people swimming in a pool of water. So it didn't mark it as mm. racy. Okay. Well, I'll let you find those boundaries. Absolutely. <laughs> we can we can figure that out later. But this is this is pretty cool. We now have a way to there you go. A close up of a baby from um, from fossils. Where I'm looking for fossils link that he. Posted. How about this? Change the description now. Now that we can rely on Vision API to know that it's safe, let our bot post the image back at the suffix of the message. Oh, here we go. I am a meat pop school. That's too racy for it. All right, so what did he post? Let's... Wait. We might we might not want to look. No, no. I wanted to look and see. Olympic volleyball team. Okay. Oh, it is... Uh, oh, that's good. So we wouldn't want to check into what is considered adult, but racy, I think, is actually good to look at. So open that image. Because so, you can see the well, image in so the here's, log. Here's the problem. Nightbot has already removed it. So if I look over here, I can actually look in the logs on Nightbot over here on my Mac. And I can see, this is from the New York Daily News. The so link. open that in private. Um, no, no, we're good. It's You don't have an H on your HTTP copy. Rats. So I'm on a different machine that's not connected right now to the... Um, but you can post that and then even just turn your laptop around for this. Oh, see, that's perfect. That's racy. That is racy. That is so, for yes. Olympics volleyball teams in bikinis, and it's full body shot. There's no nudity. No. But in some no. cultures, that is that extreme is too racy. skin showing. So by so, definition, that's perfect. That's so a win. let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the bot. I, let's, let's add that racy percentage to the command output, right? Oh, because we have the confidence... Right. But that's only if it's successful. So I can say vision description dot adult dot uh, racy score. Yeah. Um, and Formatted. Then, right. And that was, what was it, comma two? No, comma uh, zero colon P2. Comma, z- comma zero colon P2. Is that right? We did it somewhere Pre- else here where that's, we did the confidence. Yeah, right there. On N75. Ah, there it is. Cool. Yeah. All right, so if we save that and let's start again. And Think we'll of the children, have... says Ghastly Guy. <laughs> so now we'll have... Um... Yes, Nightbot is still removing links. So what I will do uh, for right now, because we are testing this, I am going to turn off... I'm going to disable links here. Well, no, it's okay to no. save the links, but let's have no, no, I'm, that I'm, same photo. I'm letting Nightbot, I'm shutting that off so that it doesn't ban people for posting links. We want to let oh, folks actually... I see. But you're still not going to show the links. You're just not going to ban them from posting them. Exactly. So I'm going to take that same image that... I forget who it was posted. And I'll key it in there. And it's going to come back. Hey, that's too racy. 89% racy. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's, makes sense. If you're interested in the definition of racy, like we talked about, then you can look at that photo. If by all means that would might be offensive to you. Right. It's it's four women volleyball players in bikinis. Yeah. There's no nudity, but you know, don't offend but it yourself is, it's, by knowing what it it's is. It's borderline. Yeah. Right? So um Drotti, thanks so much for following. Look forward to seeing you, you in the chat room. 
But I think I think we've learned a, a lot here about Vision API today. We, I mean, we took a little bit longer than we normally do in a stream, but this is really cool. Well, we. I want to just stress: there's only four lines of code. <laughs> no, no, no. This was more than four. You're you're underselling it here. Look at this. We did. We we, we used right. I mean, the connection to go interact with Azure. Yeah. It's a couple set months up a of client, code. set the headers for your auth, create a URL that you're going to post against, create the content of the body encoded, which is URL that you're sending, and get the response. I mean, so but we also learned about the paste JSON as classes. Yeah. We spent some time with that. We wrote a couple unit tests around our regular expressions. Why does Visual Studio have an orange bottom? We learned that. We did a little bit. Well, it's because somebody's been smacking Visual Studio, so it's turned orange. Um, attached to the debugger more, more yes, precisely. Yes, that's exactly why. Atta I'm sorry, debugger attached to process. We did a little bit of uh, Visual Studio live share here. So because I'm running this right now and I have the website out here, you can actually see the same website on your machine. It should have, mm -hmm. yeah. because you're attached, launched it over there. Yeah. And you could tick through. I and started you shutting see. down, so I don't have it anymore, but yeah. Okay. But I think... Um, I think we're we've really accomplished something kind of cool here. Um, uh, World oh, Wake says no. just joined. Are we trying to build Nip Alert? No, uh -huh. we're not building. So that's a reference to uh, Silicon Valley. Space Shot TV posted uh, Satya Nadella holding a sign. I don't know what the original photo was, but it had the facial recognition to know Satya. To know Nadella. Satya, yeah, wow. very nice. Um, so Nightbot does. Think it, it it was just looking at links and saying stop it and banning people, but now oh. now we have a little bit of control to be able to say this is adult, this is racy. Mm -hmm. Now to to finish the thought here inside of chat service, right? I can actually because I have a method to do this. I can say chat service dot ban user if they post something adult. Exactly. And what does ban do? It lets them continue watching the stream, but they can't post any but more they content? Can't, they can't comment. Now, I don't think I have that wired up with all of my APIs that I built yet. So I'll finish that bit my, later. Make, make it a to-do and That's comment. That's a great that. idea. To do, uh, let's do to-do. Ban user. Ban user. Well, uh, let's start off with, right, timeout. Ban user for racy. I think we definitely want to make it a timeout user. Banned for one day. Sure. Or twenty minutes. Sure. I mean, I don't know. If you're talking about swimming, then that's an appropriate picture. If you're not, then it's probably not. Sure. That makes um, sense. So, so there's a little bit to do there. Um, I want to save this. I want to let's uh, let's collect everything that we've done here. So I've got five files that were added, two that were changed. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, no, that's okay. I was going to say I could do this through the shared command prompt, but that's that's just showing more of live share. How are you on time? Do you have to go? We have three I'm, minutes. I'm fine on time. I'm going to share the command prompt, and I'm going to let you do the git commit. Um, I already shut down, so you have to send me a new share. Oh, Scott. Actually, that's it's the fine. same link. I'm still sharing. Go back into... Is it the same link? It's the same link. So that was Twitter DM. Can you ban versus timeout based on the percentage of accuracy? Fossils, that's a great question. I think we can. Yeah, you can because we have the racy score. Not can, but you could. Absolutely. Yes. Ottawa, uh, I, I don't have it running right now, guys. It, it's not looking at your images. Um, you know what you could do for people on the live stream if you're comfortable uploading a picture to Twitter and then tagging hashtag vision underscore API, you should get back the same response. And you know what I'll do is I'll go add the adult flag and do, I'll, I'll replicate the change so that in the JSON people get back on the Twitter result. It'll show the racy. Cool. Uh, show the, the racy score. Um, so you're connected. I'll share my terminal with you with read write. 
Yeah, so on my screen, I just had a terminal. This is an actual Windows terminal that pops up, and I can see exactly the same thing. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jack up the font size a little bit so it's easier for our friends online to read. All right, so this is what I do. I have ST set for status. You don't, so get status. That's going to tell me the files. So we're going to get add all the files that we've done. So we've got a color line thing here. Let's clear. So we start with a new bigger there screen. There we go. Yep. Now we can get commit. And we'll add a message that says um, added vision I think API. You need a space before that quote. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Good. Uh, added vision API to stream URLs posted as photos. What, and why don't, you, uh, why don't you tag your GitHub account in there also? Um, because it's going to get posted as this is coming off of my machine. Yeah. So it comes from my. Um, uh, my Git account, right? Okay, so, so we'll just say help from GitHub slash Scott Kate. I think you can actually just say at Scott Kate. Okay, that's good. That's Twitter and GitHub. They both happen to be the same. You like that? Yeah, there you go. All right. And now we're on a dev branch. Do you right, merge so to just master? Do, uh, no, I don't merge to master until I'm ready to do a release. Okay. But just do a Git push. No, you don't even have to do origin. Just git push. You got to spell git right. Yeah, that that helps. There's code complete on here, so I always do that. I, I always do the whole thing. I don't because okay. I don't know what other secret magic you have there. I've got lots of magic. Some, sometimes <laughs> I name my origin the host that's hosting my code because I have code in VisualStudio.com, which is a Git repo, GitHub, and then also um, what's the other Git? A Bitbucket. Oh, okay, sure. So instead of origin, I call it like my whatever my, my machine. Is. It would say Git push GitHub dev. Oh, that's so a, a that's trick. a cool tip. Because when you're creating the remote remote Git remote add origin, yeah, you can make that say anything. Sure. So I make it say the host of home. anyway. So I do have a bunch of tags out here, and I huh. I did mark my last version one point oh two. I think this is a one point one. So I actually have a script called build, I'll call and I will build version 1.10. This will start up a Docker container, do the build, and then send it up to my Azure, my private Azure container registry so that I can pull it down and put it on my production machine. Nice. And run later. Cool. So we'll just kick that off. But you've seen we've committed the code and we've pushed it to GitHub. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I totally recommend you check it out out there. And thank you for the research. We're gonna celebrate. We're gonna celebrate? I, th I think right. we found some success. I think we did, absolutely. I, I'm actually stealing this idea from Burke Holland. Burke is a member of our team. And <laughs> I they, used to work for Burke they, over at Telerik. They celebrate with Google Clusters. It, that sounds too much like Google for me. No, well, Google Clusters are supposedly pretty good. I have not had the honor of having one. My goal in life is to get on Burke's show, and he'll have a Google Cluster for me waiting. Okay. But for now, let's... let's uh, We'll uh, share a couple Reese's Cups. Absolutely. I'll give you a quick cheers, and that's how we'll end the stream. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Scott. I look forward to coming back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've got to do this again. Mm -hmm. And everybody is so happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So the source code is out there. I do stream three days a week. Saturday... We'll uh, we'll get back online, live back from my home office, going back to Philly, and uh, we'll have a good time checking I, out. And I see what you did there. Some things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good. I play that song every time I I start streaming from Philly after being on the road here. So there you go. You see, Docker is pushing my new image out to uh, out to my registry. Very nice, Azure CRIO. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. This is great. We. I think we accomplished a lot, and uh, we'll now be able to turn off Nightbot throwing links out, and if people post images, we'll know, and uh, going forward, be able to moderate a little bit better. Thank you for having me. Thanks Alrighty. for spending your time. Hopefully you uh, found some value with that. So. Absolutely. We'll see everybody on Saturday, and don't forget, actually, next week, next Saturday, next Friday, we'll have our C-Sharp workshop, 
And we were talking about maybe doing an Azure workshop. Oh, yeah. June, July. Oh, that would be so great. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about Azure. We may be doing an Azure workshop here on stream. All righty. Catch you later, everybody. Have a good one.